All right. And with that, we are live. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We are here live tonight with the long awaited continuation of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulations. Oh boy, this week has been fun for me. Very fun, so in fact, that a lovely person decided that it would be a fucking wonderful idea to just get intoxicated and crash their car straight into my power lines, which resulted in me having no power for the past two days, thus resulting in no stream. So that was fun and wonderful. But we are here tonight, despite the fact that my power went out two nights ago. Fucking jackass. <laughs> but it's not all bad, because within those two nights, we managed to do the, do the impossible, do the improbable, fight the undefeatable. And tonight, we have some special guests. Which come the fa uh, the forms of none other than our good old friends, the emotes. So tonight, we have some fun bits. If people will please affix their view to the chat. Tonight, we will see new emotes such as Fireflow. Ah, oh, look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Pearl Patine, long awaited and long discussed. And for those of you who have the BTTV extension, you get access to the one, the only, Sir Chad Wellington. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that wonderful? So tonight we ask ourselves the most important question. For Chad or not for Chad, you must decide. Whenever you wake up in the morning and look longingly out the window, you must say, for Chad or not for Chad? Am I living my life right today? Who knows? <laughs> but, thank you. I'm happy, I'm happy at the way they came out. Give a big thanks for all these emotes. To the one and only Volta Base, go check him out for all your commission needs, and give him support over at that Twitter at Volta Base. You may know him from works such as animated intros from the Super Best Friends, and animated works currently working alongside Jonathan Young. So. I give thanks to that pal of mine for taking his time and doing this and making sure that we both came out of the situation very happy and pleased with the final results. I'm very happy of that. Sir Chad is happy. Look at Sir Chad as he bows away gracefully in the chat. And we will see more of Chad in the future. He is here to stay. So with that, all, all that aside, time to get down to more Phoenix Wright. By the way, how's it going? How's your week? How's your day? Hope it's been going lovely. Mine's just been going peachy keen. You know, got my power back finally. That's great. So, where we last- oh shit. Which save file was I even on? Oops. Uh, was it the second one? I think it was the second one, right? Where we last left off it's been what? It's been like, what, two and a half weeks since I last played Phoenix Wright? I think this is where we were at, right? Right? Am I, am I crazy? Oh, I hope this is where we left off. <laughs> Oops. Where we last left off, I believe it is after the trial. I think we need to get more information. And I believe the trial is that of Maggie Bird, who is... Who has been, um... Handed the guilty verdict 
because there is a bullshit Phoenix Wright out there who looks nothing like us and sounds nothing like us out in the wild. And for some reason, people just identify him via his spiky hair. I believe this is where we last left off. I hope it is. Oh my god. It's been a while since I heard that lovely music. It's beautiful. I love it. So how did you think the trial went this morning? How do you think it went? It got a bit crazy in there. I just wondered if that killed our chances. Yeah, I guess it did get out of hand. Mr. Kudo's testimony did nothing to help us. He really dragged it. Plus, now we don't even know the identity of the waitress who laced the coffee. All we know is what Mr. Kudo saw, the apron strap and the ribbons. And that the victim was wearing an earpiece when his eardrum was ruptured. He was wearing a scouter, checking out that power level. Power level of that coffee, it was infinity, he couldn't handle it. It's too powerful, too strong. Talk about a terrifying case of contradictions. Contra wait, what? Contradiction- what? Contradictions? What? 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 <laughs> What is that last bit? What is that last? What is that last bit on that word? Is that okay? <laughs> Time to play doctor and find ourselves a cure, then, huh? Yeah. We gotta find. We gotta find one for Maggie. Wait, what? We gotta find one for Maggie, or she's gonna have a, a terminal case of guilty. That's great. That's amazing. What the fuck? Let's see. What do we have here? The food was shit. I'm trying to remember everything. It's been weeks. This guy steals shit. This guy's a perv. He's eyeing up people. This guy died because he couldn't handle the coffee. This guy... This guy's just a guy. Right? <laughs> He's just a guy. The guy. This gal. Getting in trouble as always. And Gumshoe has a little crush on her. Isn't that wonderful? Where's Pearl? Where the hell is Pearl in all this? Where did she go? Alright, well, let's head to Detention Center. See what Maggie can give us. Can give me. I guess Maggie's still in questioning. But, but we got question- we got questions to ask her, too. Maggie! Keep it down, Maya. This isn't a playground, you know. Hmm. Well, I guess she's busy. Back at 2SBN, hopefully my shit don't get stolen again. Empty, as usual. Yeah, and it's lunchtime too. That's it, come on, come on! Hey, that sounds like... <laughs> now just call it 8, pal. Wait, what? Now just call an 8, pal. Come on, I know you can. He's getting really worked up about something. No, that's wrong number! Hmm. Looks like an 8 would have only netted me 5 bucks anyways. What a ripoff. Are they gambling? What's the problem, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? Oh, it's you. I, uh, I was, a. Uh, <laughs> I was just, <laughs> yeah. I was just listening to the radio, pal. To the radio? Oh, is he doing lotteries? Hey, Detective Gumshoe's having lunch here. He is, and he's having the twin tea set. <laughs> what can I say? What can you say? What do you want about? Today's trial. This is a nightmare. How am I supposed to look Maggie in the eye now, pal? You really drove her into a corner, you know? You always blew apart my testimony. Why of all days didn't you do it today? Sorry. There just weren't any holes in it. For once. For once, for once, Gumshoe, you did your damn job, and I couldn't help it. <laughs> yeah, what happened? Usually your testimonies are like Swiss cheese. S Swiss cheese? Would you have preferred a crumbling like aged Parmesan? Anyways, this case has already been ruled on. There shouldn't be any holes left to find. So, did Maggie say anything to you? You know, about me? <laughs> well, uh, how she put it again? I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. I hate him, sir. I mean it. I don't ever want to see him again. Something like that. What? Whoa. Oh. Oh, Gumshoe. You broke his heart. I mean, we're used to breaking his heart, but this time I think we really broke his heart. 
It's after gumshoe. I didn't mean. Why? Why is this happening? He's banging his head against the wall, Nick. Oh man, poor gumshoe. Aw. Don't take it so hard, detective. So, did you like the twin tea set? I never paid that much money for lunch before. I was so nervous my hands were shaking. So, how'd it taste? Like shit. For 20 bucks, I guess? I don't know how to describe it. Really, it was... De what? Delicate. Delicate? You mean, you liked it? It didn't taste bad to you? What's the matter with them? Looks like he's thinking. <laughs> Looks like he's thinking. You can tell by the smoke coming out of his ears. That's it! I've been trying to think of the right word to describe the taste. And I just realized, it's bad! That's it, it tasted bad. Wh what? <laughs> I guess, I guess when you eat, uh, I guess when you eat nothing but, uh, instant noodles for your life, you kind of lose your sense of taste. It's just kind of hard to admit it to yourself when you pay 20 bucks for it, you know? Maybe you should have found out about the piece after he had finished the, uh, the piece, the price, after he's finished eating it. Hey Nick, maybe that's why, oh god, Glen Elg, Elk, Glen Elk came here. Maybe you heard about the super fierce twin tea set. If by fierce you mean fearsome. Speaking of Glen, that reminds me. <laughs> Poor guy. We still hardly know anything about the guy. Oh god, I just, re oh man, I just realized he's broke. That's why. <laughs> Pay twenty dollars for lunch and you're broke and you're just like, I oh, got. You're like. I had $25 in my bank account, spend $20 on lunch, <laughs> gotta say it's good, if it's not, then what the hell did I just waste my savings on? Why don't we ask Detective Gumshoe what he knows, seeing as he's here? Hmm. The radio. So, what are you all excited about earlier? Huh? That's right, you said you were listening to the radio or something. Oh, that? That was nothing, I wasn't excited. Come on, Detective Gumshoe. You can tell him, little old me what you're listening to. N nothing, really. It was just a daily exercise show. Gumshoe? What you lying about? What the? A psychic lock? Haha! <laughs> uh, lunch specials, lobster sure is great. Hmm, then why are your tears- <laughs> Why are there tears in your eyes? Just, just cry through the pain, smile through it. All right. Hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that, I'm gonna assume that I have the evidence. All right, Detective Gumshoe, tell me the truth. What you listening to? No way, pal. No way have you made a big thing out of it. I'm not gonna tell you. We'll see about that, pal. Considering all the noise you were making while you were listening, it's pretty clear what kind of radio program it was. I say it's related to... Um... Lottery ticket. Gotcha. I'm right, aren't I? You were listening to the lottery results, weren't you? You thought you'd try to win big, just like Glenn did. It's... It's like you can see right through me! Huh? I've cracked him already? See, pal? That's why I said it was nothing. Well, that was easy. I'm usually pretty lucky, so I figure I'd give it a try. What with everyone in the lot- uh, what's with everybody in the lottery? So, how'd it go? I won 50 cents. Hey, at least you came up! Huh? Uh, it'd be better to win nothing at all than half a lousy buck. No, no, it's fine. You can you can get a peppermint, maybe like a blue one. Yeah, I know the feeling. I bought the same kind of lottery ticket as Mr. Elk did, and they got this special radio show where they announce the winning numbers. They even do the drawings live on air. It's intense, pal. I bet that's what Mr. Elg was listening to on the day he was killed. 
Well, what, uh, what time is it now? Huh? It's, it's just after 1.30. Are the lottery results always broadcast at the same time? Yeah. Look, I got this flyer when I bought the ticket. Millionaire radio flyer. Experience the most, the most, why did I say it like that? Experience the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life every Monday at 1.30 p.m. <laughs> why the game constantly reminds you he's broke. First lunch and now the lottery. Oh God. Everybody in this game's broke for no reason. If you're not, if you're not directly, directly, why did I say it like that? If you're not directly a rival or like a fucking antagonist, you're broke in this game. The moment you join the party and become a good guy, you become broke. You lose all your money. Millionaire Radio, that sounds cool. I want to try it, Nick. Then buy a ticket, Maya, with your own money. <laughs> but Nick, you don't pay me. <laughs> I, I swear, I'm pretty sure we don't pay Maya. I find it weird. How is Nick always broke? If uh, we get all the biggest cases, you know, I'm just saying it makes no sense. All right, well, let's examine the area. Is there anything behind here today? It's rack full of fashion magazines, and they're all in French. Why don't you try wearing something a bit more chic sometime, huh, Maya? Yeah, I look stunning in some of those. Per uh, per what? Persian? What the fuck? I'm, I'm gonna assume. I'm gonna assume. <laughs> oh hey, hey Shark, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely time. I'll be having a lovely day. Um, maybe we can get more information from looking at this. This must be the table where the murder occurred. I guess so. Oh. Thank you for the reset. I guess so, with all the police table around it. And that stain must be from the poison coffee. Don't go and look in the tablecloth, okay, Maya? Why would I lick it? I'm not a cat, you know. <laughs> then why can I picture you doing just that? Oh, you actually had a good... That's wonderful to hear. That's what we want. Everybody should have a great day. You know, unless you're a murderer or something, then you should, like, I don't know, stub your toe in the worst way possible. Hey, SP, how's it going? Good to see you, too. Again. Alright, I'm gonna assume... Can we go... Can we go in the back to the kitchen? Well, before we do that, let's see if we have anything we can show to, uh, Gumshoe... When the incident occurred, I broke the vase at at the hmm. photo of the scene taken from near the kitchen apron. <coughs> oh <coughs> shit! My sneezing. Wonderful. The victim got this from the doctor before going to Trespian. The bag is empty. Prescription bag. Can we head to the? Can we head to the um? <coughs> To the pharmacy? Fuck, why am I sneezing so much? Apparently everyone's listening to the show now. That's because everyone wants the money. They say that the victim, Glenn, was was really into gambling. Yep, you can you can beat gambling. Wait, what? Oh, yep, you can't beat gambling. <laughs> I love it too. I won $500 last night playing cards with Nick. Is that true? Did she fucking clean me out? Huh? We were playing for money? Of course! He's just so you better pay up. You're a smart one, waiting for a cop to be present for asking for the cash. Damn! She got me. Alright, Maya. That's the apron Maggie was wearing. Yeah, it still smells like her too. What? Gumshoe? Why? Does this mean Maggie smells like ketchup? Alright. Alright, nothing there with that. Hmm. We never did find the contents of the bag. It was medicine for Mr. Elg's ruptured eardrum, right? Yeah. We found traces of it in his left ear canal. He must have used it while he was at Tereshbien. We're sure we're sure of that much. All right. Let's see if we can uh, head back to the kitchen, right? Chef should be back there. Huh? Mr. Armstrong's talking to someone. 
Oh, it's Death herself. I'll be back next month. Oh god, I forgot. Oh man. Nat natural mint? What? We're gonna have to deal with this shit. We oui, Natural mint- I don't even know what the fuck that word is. I don't even think that's a real word. I'll be waiting for you. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. Are you coming on to me? Is she coming on to him? Is that a threat? Is that a sexualized threat? None! I'll have everything ready, I promise. I love fire, you know? Oh man, that's great! I like fire too! That's the name of my channel. Hey, that's cool. I love the way it crackles. <laughs> None! Stop it! I beg of you! Then don't let me down. I'll be watching you. <sighs> Miss, none. It's not necessary. You can trust me, mademoiselle. Talk to anybody, and I'll drive a knife right through your heart. Oh, none. You don't have to worry, you know. You worry far too much. Maybe this will help you relax? It's the oil of set of saddlewood? I do love raw meat from time to time. What? A. A. This is this is a kids kid friendly stream. I'll have you know. We don't do none of that shit here. Yeah, cut it out. But if you do want to continue that stuff, you can meet me out back in five minutes. Huh. I'll be taking my leave. Goodbye for now. I'm assuming she's of age. <laughs> I have the shivers. I must rub some of my oil all over my body for becoming a nervous wreck. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna read that. <laughs> oh la la, excuse moi, monsieur. My eyes, my eyes. Your eyes? If you have trouble with your eyes, you need this, the oil of saddlewood. Isn't this just the leftovers of what you were using? That's some freaky shit. So does she- Oh, she hasn't been put in the thing yet. Damn it, I need to know more about that lady. Alright. You don't exactly have many customers, do you, Mr. Armstrong? None, you're right, monsieur. But perhaps it's the perfect time for you to visit me, no? That's why I can give you my undivided attention and cook for you and cook for you less dishes cream. Putting on a brave face, huh? <laughs> gotta respect gotta respect the sales pitch. Didn't miss a beat. <laughs> That's what girls do, Nick. But <laughs> but you are right. Business is very difficult these days. Perhaps name perhaps the name is the problem. People do not understand it. They think it's Trey? What? I just wanted people to think think that my me uh, think that my restaurant was exclusive. This guy is fucking ugh. The accent skipped me. But they think you just serve fast food on the cheap plastic trays. Nick, that's the kind of thing that can make a girl cry. Have you forgotten that Mr. Armstrong's a man, Maya? But it's but wow. Well, but it but it's a restaurant. Fuck. His accent is gonna kill me by the end of this. But the restaurant is my life. It's everything to me. I will defend it to the final. No one will take it from me. Okay. What about the woman just now? So, who's that woman you were talking to? Oh, ooh la la. You saw that? Oh, uh, well, yeah, sorry. So, who was she? She looked so polite and graceful. In what fucking universe, Maya? Oh, Maya, you... You sweet, you sweet, innocent summer child. Oh, just, just, just get out. Get out now. You're, you're not helping. Leave. I don't need you here. P polite? Graceful? And she, and she likes raw meat and fires, right? I'll be back next month. I'm, I'm not even gonna read that. That word is unnecessary. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. 
<laughs> I'll have everything ready, I promise. Now that I think about it, hey, Maya, I think it's pretty clear what kind of conversation they were having. You think so? Well, then let's show them the piece of evidence and see what happens. What piece of evidence? What are you talking about, Maya? You talking about, uh... Talking about how, like, he's broke? Sean's half a million dollars. This one? So long as this paper exists, I am but a delightful angel with, a, with broken wings. An angel, huh? Doesn't bode well when you think about it. We... They keep harassing me month after month. In the end, I have given... I agreed to help them. Help them? With what? My, oh god, oh god, how am I- what? Mies <laughs> bien What the fuck? I, I don't even- I can't even. If I do not owe them the money, I would have refused. But, my hands are tied. Please, what do you agree to help them with? None. I cannot say. If I tell you, that woman, she will slice me up. And eat me like a salad garnish. Ew. Hope he doesn't mean that he'll literally be sliced up and served the garnish. I'm gonna guess that the woman has something to do with your loan contract, am I right? Ugh. Oh. Please, Mr. Armstrong, tell us about the woman. The woman who was here earlier, I take it that she's, uh, a loan shark. Oh, hey, Greg, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely... Lovely week. Why, uh, let's see. Why has it come to this? It's a tragedy. Suddenly I find myself so deep in debt. It's a sign of... It's a sign of the bad, bad world we live in, huh? No, I say it's more of the sign of the bad, bad culinary skills. The woman who was here, the scary woman, she's from the loan office. Loan office? Is that where you borrowed half a million dollars from? We... Oui. Tinder, Tinder, Linder, Tinder, Linder. Okay. <laughs> Catchy name. Just hearing it makes a, makes me want to borrow some money. Hearing it reminds me of Final Fantasy fourteen, especially since I just repaid my sub. We're heading to Limsa Lo Limsa. <laughs> Please, you must not borrow from them. If you must. No more than ten dollars. Ten dollars? You sound like your whole monthly stri uh, strip- 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 what? strip -end. I don't know what that word is. Hey! I get a bit more than that, thank you very much. I'm assuming it's another word for allowance. So Tinder Lender is the loan office that you borrowed half a million from, huh? I wonder if they got anything to do with this case. Most likely. Probably. I'm a weak woman. When I'm upset, I have, I have to buy something nice to cheer me up. Thanks, uh, thanks to, thanks to them, I'm loaning me, I'm lo wow. Holy fuck. He's getting me. <laughs> Believe it is. Thanks, uh, thanks to him loaning me the money. I've paid half a million dollars, wait, what? I have to pay half a million dollars now. Fuck, your accent is just gonna kill me, man. I'm like, I'm like the slave. I have to do everything they tell me to. Hmm, who is he? The tiger. The tiger? We. Oui. He is the manager of the tender lender, a terrifying man, the big city mobster. When he shouts at me, my knees are trembling and his voice is ringing my ears for three days. As soon as I hear the noise of the battered old scooter rides, I try to cry. Wait, I try to cry. I start to cry. Fuck, he is getting to me. A big city mobster who rides a battered old scooter. Hmm, does this guy resemble me by any chance? Oh, no, 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 no. This man is... man has a presence. A most formidable personality. Although... He does have the spiky hair just like you. We. Oui. Here, here's a resemblance. Here, I suppose. Hmm. Sounds like the loan office is worth checking out, after all. If you want to visit the Tender Lender, it's just beyond Vitamin Square. 
Hey, Nick. If you need money, I can loan you some. As long as it's less than three dollars. Wow, Maya, you really... I really don't pay you at all? Like, you... Why is everybody broke? Hmm, thanks for the offer. Just beyond Vitamin Square, huh? This game's making me feel bad. <laughs> this is making me feel bad for everybody. And myself. Jesus. Nobody can have a come up in this world. Oh, there's the bike. Well, you look at that. Hmm, I don't see any signs of Mr. Kudo, do you? Maybe he went to buy another ton of bird seeds. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't be here anyways. At least for now. Besides, any more seeds today, I'm liable to turn into a real phoenix. He fucking, he beast morphs into a goddamn phoenix. Hey, check this out. I wouldn't get too close to that if I were you. Otherwise, you might be in for a shock. My phone, <laughs> my phony must be lurking someplace nearby. Just imagine a tiger loose in the city. Meanwhile, the real phoenix is like an abandoned chick lost in a vast urban jungle. Huh? Don't worry, someday you'll grow up and become a ferocious tiger too. Don't lose hope. Why is she trying to pep tap talk me into becoming my my phony? Okay. What's with the birds? Phone died right as you got here, but I'm back. Hey look, pigeons! Yeah, and a heap of them too. Did you know that pigeons are a symbol of peace? Are they? That's a dove, not a pigeon. Yeah, fucking what? Poor things. So they can't be symbols of peace and harmony just because they're gray. Is that it? You're overthinking this one. Just by a smidge, Maya. Just a little bit. I guess... I guess that's it for now. I guess we'll come back later. Hmm. It's Tinder Linder! Look at those fancy ass suits. My man has like a pink... a pink pimp coat. Look at that. This place gives off a really strange vibe, doesn't it? Looks like the tiger isn't in his lair. And that is, as they say, a very good thing. The opposite of bad. Welcome. Talk about a creepy voice. It makes your soul want to shrivel up and die. You're here to discuss alone? I think I'm here to buy you a sandwich. You look... You look hungry. Do you need to see a doctor? Does your head hurt you? <laughs> no, not exactly. The manager's away at the moment. Well, wait quietly, please. She's gone. Just like that. Like a ghost. Was she ever here to begin with? Who knows? Maybe she's already dead. I guess we'll just have to come back another time. But this is the perfect opportunity, Nick. This place reeks of suspicion. Come on, Nick. Let's take a look around, okay? Do you think it'd be okay? Of course! No one will ever know. Coffee? I don't... I don't think that's a good idea, Maya. I don't think... I don't think that's a good idea. I think we should keep the stepping the other way. I'll leave it here for you to enjoy. Quietly. Yes, thank you. She fucking, she's just sneaking in the shadows. She's like a fucking ninja. Do not touch the desk, please. N Nick? Let's get out of here. Now she wants to get out of here. Yeah, no, uh, I don't think we'll be able to do anything. I mean, it's worth the shot, right? What, what, what's the worst that can happen besides a knife appearing in my back, right? There's a CD player on the desk, but the desk is so loud. It's, wait, what? But the desk is so loud. Wait, what? <laughs> it's a wonder you can hear it. Oh, because it's gold. All right. The lid's open. I wonder what kind of music the tiger's into. Have you finished? The coffee? Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks. It was lovely. 
So, you drank it all? Damn, you can you can just cut butter with the tension in the air right now. <laughs> if you touch anything else that doesn't belong to you, there's always another cup. All right. That coffee, it was laced with something. I'm almost sure of it. Nick, my stomach, it's killing me. Oh, wait. Maybe it was just the burger I ate for breakfast. I, I sure hope it was. You better take a look at the CD. We better take a look at the CD while we're still alive. Had the chance. What the? Wait, it's not the Rocco soundtrack, is it? Claw of the Tiger. It's, it's a demo CD. <laughs> She's freaky. I know, and I love her for it. The artist's name here ha has been handwritten on the disc and pen. MC Bomber. What? This must be the CD Maggie told us about. Let's listen to it. I bet it's heavy metal. Maya, that's not a good idea. I don't think we want to listen to the... I don't think we want to give a signal that we're touching shit. No way. That woman will make us drink coffee if we do. MC Bomber. Alright, and what about this? Because this stands out. Oh no, someone dropped the ashtray on the floor. That's going to be a nightmare to clean up. Yeah, it's really it's all over the rug and everything. I accidentally knocked over a really big space heater once, cleaning it up was such a pain. It was one of those super antiques where you have to burn a ton of charcoal. How does she manage to knock one of those over? Aren't they supposed to be super heavy? With her fucking, with her thickness, just bam, knocked it all over. Oh hey, there's a book of matches here too. Matches, huh? Places don't give those out much nowadays. Hey, wait a second. What is it? Looks what looks was printed on the cover. It says tres bien. The matches could come. From, matches could come in handy. We might be able to use them. Yeah. The pilot, uh, the pilot light for the office boiler keeps going out. Swing and a miss, Maya. Swing and a miss. All right, I. Th Think, I'm gonna assume that's all we really need here. Two big pieces of evidence there to show that the dude was somewhere in Trespian. Went through compromise. I like the way that I like that motto. I wonder what that's supposed to mean. It must be something if they took the trouble of framing it like that. Yeah, well, it still doesn't make any sense to me. Come on. Come on, girl. I'm just- I'm looking at the sign! What am I doing wrong? That's Tenderlinder's guiding principle. Oh. Compromise the comprom compromise the customer to win. Oh, I see. How about you, Nick? Yeah. Well, as long as we don't have to compromise my hair, I say we're okay. That's one slogan no business owner should ever explain to their customers. Alright, well then, I guess I'll just... Exit myself on out of here. There he is! Old CD's back, feeding the pigeons again. There, take this! And this! And get out of my park! Like a... Like I thought, he was really mad. Come on, Maya. Just keep your head down and let's sneak away while we still can. What? Why? Hello, old man! What are you doing, Maya? Hmm? <laughs> hey, he just turned his back on us. Good. Now let's keep going before he turns his forward on us. I'm not surprised. I bet I really hurt his pride in the court this morning. What pride? That man had no pride. <laughs> hey, Mr. Kudo. Hmm? P pigeons. Looks we look, we really need to talk to you, alright? Out with the demons. I'm with good fortune. Ow. Sea still <laughs> sea shell wait what? Seashell splinters, painfully. I always knew you were a demon, Maya. I love his music. His music is so grumpy. Time to talk to fucking Heat Miser. 
Sorry about what happened in court earlier today. <laughs> Everyone be talking about it behind my back now. A dirty old man who is who's so busy looking at the service girl's backside that he can't remember her face. A filthy, depraved animal. Not at all. Are you listening to me, boy? I don't care what you say. I saw the waitress pull it in. She put some white powder into the young, young lad's java kit. Fuck. Java. Cappuccino! We hear ya. And another thing, the young layabout was wearing an earpiece on the same side as the lens as his broken spectacles. We're really sorry. So I made a little mistake about the vase. So what? I know what I saw. I tell you. I tell you, I'll tell you. Alright, take it easy. Please, Mr. Kudo, for you fucking have a heart attack and die. Don't take me easy, you spiky-haired brat. Take this! Take my seeds. I'll throw them at you. You said you were a craftsman, right? The modern world class, honest craftsman. Like me, a side and dro Wait, what? I felt like I read none of that. <laughs> the modern world cast... Honest craftsmen like me aside in droves. Surely it's not that. I come from a long line of craftsmen, right back to the time of the shoguns. Do you hear me? I didn't become an, a, an embroiderer. I was born one. Actually, I'm kind of in the same situation myself. I... I wanted to stick my fingers up the, dribb the dribbling old judge's nose. I don't think a guy with that nose is able to say that. And scream right down his ear hole. Objection! Oh, so did you want to become a lawyer when you were young? I don't think that's quite it, Maya. I think he's just in a bad mood, that's all. I've got a tsunami of frustration inside me. It's ready to burst out. If we let him start rambling now, we might never shut him up. What should I do? Cut in. Suck it up! Um, actually, we got places to go, things to check, and stuff. Maybe another time. Fine, whatever. Just don't forget I got a tsunami worth of grumbling to do. Yes, yes, yes. This girl right here is looking real- It's really looking forward to hearing all those, honestly. What? I never said that. Well, you did now. Come to the place where I work. Then here. Bring this- <laughs> Bring this along with you. What is this? It's covered in seeds. Discount coupon for a burger? You really want someone to grumble at, huh? Although, it is a burger joint. I'm pretty sure if we let him grumble, he might say something important. Suck it up. Guess I better let him talk. So, there's not... I'm sorry, my fucking nose is like bothering me. It feels like I'm about to sneeze again. Holy shit. There's not much call for a craftsman these days, huh? Of course not, you idiot. All I'm good for nowadays is running errands. Errands? Have you finished with those errands? Everyone takes advantage of the elderly. Buy some bread, Gramps. Take the dog for a walk, Granddad. Feed the pigeons, old man. What am I? What am I? Some sort of too big community handyman? Um, well. Buy some bread. Now that's what I can understand. But what's the point of feeding some CD pigeons? Why don't people say they say what they mean? Get lost. That's what they're trying to say. Oh yes, I'm just an incon inconvenience, you see. At home, at the restaurant, I just get in the way, don't I? I'm sure you don't. Wait a minute. What did he just say? At home and at the restaurant. Hold up. By restaurant? You talking about Trespian? Did you get asked to run an errand there too? Yes, I did. The very day that young brat was poisoned. What? And you left that out of your testimony? Why? Pourquoi? So on the day of the incident, what were you asked to do? I'm glad you asked, boy. Because I'll tell you what I was asked to do. All of a sudden, that young lad slumped over the table. The servant girl collapsed, and I broke the vase. It all happened so fast, I was in a bit of a daze, you see? Then the owner shouted over to me. 
Excuse me, you call the police. Call them yourself. I should have said back, but I didn't think it, I didn't think better at that time. So, did you end up calling the police? Like I said, I was in a bit of a daze. Did you call them on your cell phone? Do I look like I have one of those new fangled thingamajigs? Thingamajig. I went out. I went out looking for a payphone, of course. You went looking for one? I couldn't find one right away, you know. Wandered around about five minutes or so. Five minutes. So for five minutes after the incidents happened. Yes, sir. The owner wasn't just being on his own. Why didn't you mention this in court this morning? Well, I would have if you'd give me the chance. But all you bullied me out of the courtroom. Thanks to you. Thank you, Mr. Kudo. You certainly owned your kudos for today. Wait, wait a minute. If that's the case, there's more. There's more I got to say. Oh, yes, I remember something else. Bailiff, escort the witness outside the courtroom. It's not my fault. You're the ones to blame. You could have at least told us before we got before we got to court. Is it really that important that Mr. Kudo was the one who called the police? Well, it gives enough time for people to fuck up, you know, the evidence. What's important is the unaccounted time, the unaccounted time for the police arrived. The victim was dead and Maggie was unconscious, which leaves that woman, I mean, the man alone in the restaurant. Mr. Kudo might have been chased out of the place on purpose. What do you mean? Maybe a certain someone didn't want him to don't, didn't want him in the restaurant. Oh. No, oh, sure. You go ahead and say I was in the way as usual. I suppose I should have been getting myself covered in pigeon poop instead. Hmm? We need to get more details about what exactly happened from Maggie and from Mr. Armstrong. All right. Well, thank you for that, Mr. Kudo. Yeah. Given us a lot to think about. Maybe we can get information from Maggie. I guess we can't. Maybe we can get information from Armstrong. Looks like Mr. Armstrong's out again. But the place is open for business. You can't have an open restaurant without a chef. Hey, it's not my fault, Nick. Don't take it out on me. Only a couple of minutes after the incident happened, Mr. Kudo left the scene, leaving Mr. Armstrong here alone. Uh, missing when we need to talk to him the most. Maybe he's trying to avoid us on purpose. I mean, that's what a, that's what a filthy murderer would do. Hmm. Now this is one large mirror. I bet this is where he makes himself look pretty. There's a book on the dresser. Not exactly uh, pul Pultier's Prize material, huh? I hope I said that right. I'm pretty sure I didn't. It looks like a collection of poems he's written. Poems? Cool. Read them out. Read them out loud. Say it with your best friend. Okay, we did this already. We sure as fuck did that already. And I'm not doing it again. <coughs> My nose is like getting clogged up for some reason. Alright. Maybe now we can talk to Maggie. No, we can't. Alright. What about the department... Looks like Gumshoe's not here. Well, because he's in the he's in the restaurant. Never mind that. What's going on? It feels different in here somehow. You think? Yeah. Everyone seems to be on edge. What are you doing? Calling the officers for the quick bri uh, for the briefing. Wait, what? For the briefing, quick. Can't you shut down the station server? Chief, quit playing on the internet. But my email pen pal, one three three seven. Eight, what? Seven ands prince. Wait, what? Something, princess. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Save it for later. I'm turning it off now. No! My princess! Everyone, Everyone's keeping busy in here, huh? Keeping busy? More like panicking, if you ask me. Something's going on. Something big. Alright. 
maybe the director can tell us. This must be the chief, well, director, chief, whatever the hell. This must be the chief of the dire of the detectives here. He looks lost now that the power of his computer has been cut off. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to write her a real letter instead of an email. Alternatively, you could write up something, some reports. Just a suggestion. Dear Princess, how are you? I'm okay. How was the show last night? Wow, that's an awesome job. Maybe I should send in my resume and become a chief. Huh. Well, that's interesting. I guess we can... Hmm. Maybe we can head back to the, uh, to Tender Lender. Nope. Nothing different at Tender Lender. Alright. What do we have to show you? Let's see. You gave us the, when the incident occurred, I broke the vase at my seat. I am sorry. I guess the haiku is not important. Um... Huh. I would assume he would have some matches. If he goes there all the damn time. What about, uh... Oh, wait, hold up. Let's head to Gumshoe real quick. Maybe he'll, um... He'll say something about this. Really, Gumshoe? Nothing? Whole lot of nothing? That's great. That's amazing. What about the matches? Hmm. Ah, that's it, really. You. What about the bike in front of you? Really got nothing to say about the bike. You're in the park the whole entire damn time, and you don't know nothing about the bike. Alright. Job listings. Hmm. What about the lottery? I would assume he would know something about the lottery since, you know, he's broke. Nothing, oh man. He's giving off nothing. I'm guessing, I'm gonna guess that's all we got for him. Alright. Present. I will present you with the coffee cup. Nothing. I haven't got anything to say about that, pal. Just take it away already, please. Spending $20 on this has been killing him inside. Pre present Gadot to Gumshoe? Did it change already? Mr. Gadot agreed to take this case just so he could face you, pal. He was working on a bunch of morning import- uh, morning? He was working on a bunch of more important cases, but he canceled them all. Huh? But then, why didn't Mr. Godot take this case? When Maggie's first trial came up? Yeah, that's kind of odd. I mean, everyone thought that the defense was Phoenix Wright. So why didn't he try to fight me then? Well, according to Mr. Godot, he knew the guy was the phony right away, so he didn't want to bother with the trial. He could have just bothered to tell the judge. Uh. You know what? You know what that chef said to me? Ooh la la! Your body is full of all the toxins. And he gave me this bottle. What's in it? I don't know. It label says Jennifer. I think I read this already. You know, in all my years, I've never seen a witness who was that confused before. Yeah, you looked pretty confused by his testimony. Nothing against the old guy. I like, I like them and all. But, he sounded like he was pretty sure about what he saw. Yeah, that's the impression I got too. Me? 
Me three. But then, why does... Why doesn't even a single part of his testimony collaborate with any of the facts? Actually, you know what? Head back to Vitamin Square. Totally forgot I can present people. Really? Nothing about the chef? Absolutely nothing? People are making this more difficult. What about himself? Oh, damn. What about the victim? Really, nothing, sir? Nothing at all. Nothing. What about Maggie? Wow, you are... You are nothing about... <laughs> nothing about cat. Nope. What about... Oh, wait. My own profile is not here. What about Maya? Alright, I tried my best. I tried my best, you're useless. Wait, what? Oh no, present. That's what I gotta do. What about the victim? This guy was a real programming genius. They, ca uh, they called him the walking computer at the place where he worked. What happened when he crashes, though? Does he just stop moving all of a sudden? He wasn't literally a computer, Maya. Anyways, there's nothing between Maggie and the victim. Yeah, that's what we found out yesterday, too. Hey, Detective Gumshoe, don't you have any information that's a bit more fun? Fun? Uh... Oh, I know. So, have you paid a visit where Mr. L worked yet? You might, you might as well. His workplace? Where's that? A computer firm called Blue Screens Inc. Or something like that. Sounds like a real stable company. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it does not. <laughs> For a programming company? Oh, God. This could be fun, Nick. Let's go. Computers aren't really my thing, Maya. We'll be fine. I know all about that high-tech stuff. Maya? Maya, you grew up in a fucking village. Separated from society. I don't think you know about that. It's just around the corner from this joint. You should take a look. A computer firm called Blue Screens, huh? Well, I'm gonna head back to the precinct now. We got a big meeting starting up in a bit. About Maggie's case, you mean? No, that's pretty much wrapped up by now. There's nothing- there's no- uh, there's another big case going down at the moment, and she's been pushed aside. Okay. Well, see you later. see you later then. Oh. Thank you for the raid. Dumbula. Dumbula. I feel bad saying that. Thank you for the raid of three. I greatly appreciate it. For some reason, my fucking alert for the raid didn't play. I don't know why. But thank you, nonetheless. I greatly appreciate it. What happened, Gumshoe? You better get going, Detective, or you'll be late. Actually, I am... Um, <laughs> sorry, it's not a lot, but you wanted, <laughs> you wanted me to get more viewers? Thank you. No, the thought thought just counts. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a lot or not. I'm appreciative, as always. Uh, something that something that I was told about, though, for for the Raiders who just joined, if, you, if you're so inclined to stay, uh, can you kindly refresh your pages? Because when you raid, it doesn't count as an actual view for some reason, unless you refresh the page. So, that's weird. But thank you, nonetheless. Everybody needs to see him come shoot. I kinda got a favor to ask. It's a big one. You know what? Fuck it. Let me... Hold up. For some reason, my alert for raids never happens when it happens, and I feel bad for it. I feel bad about it. So, I'm just gonna head... I'm just gonna head to fucking, uh... The stream labs real quick and just manually play it because fucking hell. I don't know why they keep doing that shit. It makes me it makes me sad. Stream labs, where are you? It makes me really sad because <laughs> I like it. Oh, do I gotta log in? Shit. <laughs> there we go. Where the hell is my? 
Where the hell are my widgets? My my alerts. Alert boxes. Why are they making it so difficult? Why is everything so difficult here? All right, I'm gonna click the test, the test raid button. You ready? And go. Let's get this party started. Let's get this party started. Let's get this party started. Yeah. Let's get this party started. 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 I don't know why it never plays. It never plays for some reason. I like Nato. Nato needs to dance for our pleasure. All right. Anyways, <laughs> a favor. Yeah, it's for um Maggie. Actually, I was kind of hoping you give this to her for me. Gumshoe, did you try to make her lunch on your shit salary? Hot dogs and rice. I see nothing wrong with that. What is it? It's a lunchbox. I got up early so I could make it. I've been really worried about her. She looked like she lost a lot of weight. Detective Gumshoe. How many wieners are in here? There's not, per not a person on earth who could chow down and all that. You think? I love weenies. I can't get enough of their tender juiciness. So will you give it a... God. <laughs> their tender juiciness. So will you give it to her? It took me ages to make, so please say you will, pal. I can't exactly say no, can I? Gumshoe's lunchbox. You gave it to Maya to carry. Maybe I'll eat it myself if I get hungry. Don't forget, okay? I'm counting on you to give that to Maggie. He's finally gone. <laughs> Ooh, he's finally gone. <laughs> Alright, well I guess we can head to the detention center now. Oh, Mr. Wright! Hello, Maggie. So, they finished questioning you? Wasn't it just unbelievable in court today, sir? I'm gonna stay up all night and blog about everything that happened. Blog- wait, you can't blog from the detention center. Wait, what? Weren't you scared? It was pretty touch and go in there. Yeah, but you totally nailed that old man. Well, he was all over the place with his testimony. He's not the only one. Huh? What do you mean? What do you mean? Why'd I say like that? What do you mean? <laughs> Everyone else's testimonies don't match up either. Not with what I remember of the incident anyways. Is it possible she's the one who's misremembering uh, uh, things? Words, sounds, vowels, they come out your mouth as you speak. Try to use them. <laughs> Contradictions. Maggie, you know how you said that everyone else Provided testimonies that doesn't match up with what you remember? Yep. There's just so many things that I don't- that don't seem to add up. The biggest contradiction is the other guy I saw at the victim's table. He was the one who slipped something into the victim's coffee. I'm sure it was him. But didn't Mr. Kudo testify earlier today? That it was the waitress who put some white powder into the coffee cup? So... You really think it was this disappearing man that did it? Well, he's not the only thing that disappeared. The CD vanished as well. You know, the CD with the writing on it? Oh yeah! The MC Screwdriver album, right? It was MC Bomber, Maya. That name was scrawled on the sports paper as well. They never did find the CD at the crime scene, sir. Or the victim's medication that's gone missing too. Ouch, my head. This is getting way too complicated for me. Alright, what about after the incident? You said that you passed out when the victim Glenn collapsed, right? Yes. So piercing. I mean, I used to be a cop. When I came to, the restaurant was buzzing with the police. And before I knew what was going on, they arrested me, sir. So between the time the victim collapsed and the time the police arrived on the scene, you have no idea what went on in Trapian. Nope, not an idea at all. Why, is it important? 
The other witness, the old man from the park, was pretty much chased out of the picture. Chased out of the picture? What do you mean? Old Seedy wasn't inside the restaurant because he was told to go call the police. Exactly. And you, Maggie, were unconscious. That means Mr. Armstrong was alone in the restaurant for a brief period of time. No. You don't think Mr. Armstrong set me up, do you? I mean, it's plausible to save his own ass from the loans. My question is, why would they want to kill the guy? Was the, was the demo, was the demo, was the mixtape so fucking hot that they were like, we got to piece this guy. He's got to get out of here. He's about to make a million dollars off this shit. When you consider the facts, it's hard to imagine that Mr. Armstrong isn't involved in all this. Mm -mm. It's like the master biting the paw of the dog that it feeds. Are you sure about this, Mr. Wright? Well, the old man said as much when we spoke with him earlier. I don't know. The thing the old man says doesn't add up for some reason. Maggie looks like she's trying to figure something out. Maybe we should ask Maggie exactly what she knows about Old City. Sure, why not? Ah, I feel much better after the trial this morning. It's been a bit of a court, uh, it's been a bit of a courtroom process. Uh, wow. Ugh, let me try that again. I've been a bit of a courtroom pr uh, pr pr proceeding addict for years now. Fuck. <laughs> it was like forever since I saw a witness as slippery as that old man. He's not really that bad of an old man, though. Still, I feel a bit uneasy. Huh? I thought you just said you felt much better. Maggie, if there's something on your mind, you gotta tell us. Especially if it has anything to do with Mr. Kudo or his testimony. Roger, I'll spill it all and see what you can make of it. Alright, well then, let them flow. Is there anything about Mr. Kudo's testimony that stood out as odd to you today? Actually, yes. The fact that he was even testifying to begin with doesn't, uh, doesn't quite... Doesn't quite what? Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table... It's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Yeah, you know that already it was Victor Kudo. But I can't really say it was an old man. Okay, then how about calling him a really old middle-aged man? No, age isn't the issue. The other customer was a woman. A w w a woman Are you sure, Maggie? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. So, what did the woman look like? Hmm, she was sort of creepy? And she had a kind of cackling laugh. Creepy. Cackling? Why did I get the feeling I've come across a woman like that recently? Hmm. Oh, Maggie, by the way. Here's, uh... Here's some weenies. Oh yeah, I got something. You're gonna love it. Really? What is it? A lunchbox, just for you. Here. Wow, a lunchbox. Weenies, too. I can't believe it. Thank you, sir. Did you make this for me, Mr. Wright? Nah, it was Detective Gumshoe. Who else would make such a nice lunchbox for you? Detective Gumshoe? He's really worried about you. Looks like you put a lot of effort into making this, too. I can't accept it. Detention center rules. No gifts allowed, sir. Hey, come on, Maggie. Don't be like that. The rules are the rules. They'll lock you up if you break them. Somehow, when an ex-cop turns witness, turned waitress says that, it seems a whole lot scarier. Anyways, I hate weenies. Oh, really? It's all yours, Maya. You can enjoy it with Mr. Wright. I think I'll pass. But... Aw. She's right. It's better than letting it go to waste. But... I guess so. Gumshoe's lunchbox eaten with Maya. Do we really just sit there and eat nothing but rice and hot dogs? <laughs> okay. Well, how was it? It hit the spot. I love weenies! Oh good. 
I'm glad I gave it to you then, sir. Oh, I feel bad. Are you okay? Are you okay, Maggie? You don't really hate Gumshoe, do you? Back when I was an officer, Detective Gumshoe always looked out for me. But today, today, I was the one who had to look out for him, trying to incriminate me the whole time. You gotta remember, Maggie, Gumshoe's a detective. He's got a job to do. My old boss, I thought at least he'd be on my side. He is on your side. He'd do anything for you. You can't fool me. I saw him in court today. I feel like a poor little baby woodpecker being pecked on the head by its own mother. Gumshoe's testimony was pretty solid. No wonder it hurt her so much. I hate him, sir. I mean it. I never want to see him again. Ouch. I think I just saw Gumshoe's chances go down in flames like the Hindenburg. I don't think it's getting through to her that they really was trying to help. Hmm. Anything about Armstrong? Mr. Armstrong was very good to me after I f was fired from the force. I can't believe someone as nice as him could have anything to do with this. Well, in the time between the victim being poisoned and the police and the police being called, the only person who was on the scene and had a chance to do anything was Mr. Armstrong. There was no one else there. Mr. Armstrong wouldn't. He wouldn't set me up, would he? Uh, seems like that. Uh, I feel much- oh wait. Why am I doing this? We did this already. Oops, my bad. My bad. Glenn. Ah, the victim, isn't it? That day was the first time you ever seen this man, right? Yes, I never- I never met or seen him before then. I just happened to be a waitress who served him a coffee. That's all. It seems he was a computer programmer. Really? I'm useless with computers, completely hopeless. I don't know any computer programs. Did she mean programmers? Hmm. I know I used to be one of the police force, sir. But I'm in I'm incarcerated now. Uh, I'm incarcerated now. So I can't use my contradictions my contradictions. My connections to help you. All I can tell you about now is info about ex cons or clientels of 2SBN, sir. Aw, don't let it get to you. Hmm. Alright, well I guess that's all we have for Maggie. We can head to, uh, Blue Screens. Oh, look at the nerds! Wow! This place is so high-tech! It looks like something ripped straight out of, like, fucking Star Trek. Like, early-ass Star Trek. <laughs> wow, this place is so high-tech, you can almost smell the electricity in the air. It is a computer firm, Maya. They can't work without electricity, you know. Who are you? Oh, hello, miss! Oh, um, hello. I'm sorry. Access is restricted to authorized personnel only. This is a computer programming laboratory. There are far too many trade secrets that could be leaked. Wow. What secrets? Everything you see here is classified. No information can leave this building. Understood. Who is this woman? She's like a robot from some kind of whack... Uh, auton... What? what? Automatic... Hmm. Let me... Let me try this. I got this. I can do the word. Automacational show. Or does it just say educational? <laughs> Edumacation. My name is Lisa ba Basil. Hmm. That's cool. And the company... I'm the company's director. Director? She's a human? She seems more like a ghost in the shell. Hey, an anime reference. Who would have saw that in an anime game with anime? That's cool. And the thing over her eye? Isn't that the same device Glenn, Glenn had? That's a, D, a DMH, huh. Nice try, but it's the other way around, Maya. It's a HMD. All of my programmers here at Blue Screens Inc. are supplied with HMDs. Then do you write programs too? No, I just enjoy wearing this. They are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind one. I wouldn't mind one. Can I have it? I like a scouter. Tell me about her power level. 
All right. Blue screens. So what exactly is this firm's business? I will try to simplify it so that you can understand. We analyze the data management systems required by certain branches of industry. And then deliver... Uh, uh, what? Sorry, my nose like clogged up. Holy shit. I'm like kind of getting over a cold too. Shit. And then deliver... Autom... What? Op optimum. For some reason I couldn't say the word. Like, it escaped me. Delivered optimum operation systems and source level components to them. Huh? You lost me on the corner of analyze, analyze and management. It doesn't matter. They analyze stuff. You got that much, right? The software we produce is distributed on CDs. CDs? Yes. Compact disc. Digital optical storage media. Of course, CDs are used for software as well as music. It is a small firm, but all of my employees are first-class programmers. Let's ask one of them what they're doing. Excuse me, what are you working on right now? I'm researching the impact of time slicing- oh god. On a local axis to share- alright, I tried my best. I can't do it. Variables and memories ahead of visual- oh, okay. Well, you get the idea. This is the sort of thing we are involved in. Did you good people follow all that? Yeah, kind of, maybe. Your blank smile just says it all. Alright, so what happened? You know about what happened, right, Miss Basil? You mean about Glenn being poisoned? Yes, I know it's terrible. Can you tell us anything that might be helpful? I don't think so. A police officer was here earlier, too. But I couldn't tell him anything, either, because... The waitress who committed the crime has nothing to do with Blue Screens, Inc. Oh. How about Mr. E uh, Mr. L's work? Uh, Mr. L's desk? Have you cleared it out already? No, not yet. It's the one right in front of you. Is there anything that might be useful to you? You're welcome to take it. I guess there might be clues here somewhere. Well, thank you, Miss Basil. I guess I'll have a look-see. If anything, looks like he's definitely a gambling man. Look at all these fucking post-it notes. No clues here. Really? I can't check the notes? Wow. Look at all the mess. Looks like they're all betting tickets. What kind of betting tickets? For betting on which horse will win the race. Horse racing tickets. Oh, wow. His drawers are stuffed with... Uh, eh. His drawers are stuffed full of these. Looks like they're all losing tickets, though. Hmm. Take over 500 of them. Holy shit. There's many tickets. These many tickets, you what? Bug down at the recycling center. But I didn't know you were so hard up that you tried to profit from the dead, Nick. I'm just taking them as evidence, Maya. And maybe a little profit. We're all broke here. We can all use a little extra money in our pockets. Whoa, look at the desk, Nick. What a mess. Looks pretty average to me. But you can't get any work done with everything all over the place like this. You think? Real whiz kids can work under any conditions, you know. Hmm. She's trying to hint that I should tidy my desk a little more, but I'm not gonna let her win. I'll clean my desk when Maya stops asking silly questions. No hurry, then. Hey, this calendar. What about it? If this is another hint about tidying, you can forget it. Someone marked December 3rd in red pen. December 3rd? That's the day Mr. Elg was murdered. Is there anything else? Yeah. Um, it says meet with the tiger. The tiger. Hmm. And what about this? Oh, nothing? Alright, is that it, really? A man has his whole entire, like, sleeping bag under his desk and everything. I'm gonna assume these guys aren't important. We're just gonna assume that. I don't feel- I'm gonna be honest. I'll be 100% honest here. I don't feel like talking to them. <laughs> All right, Miss Basil. Um, do you do you know anything about this? Um, would you mind taking a look at this? I'm sorry, that that is super ad admin restricted desktop access password protected. Super admin restricted desktop access password protected. 
What? What is this madness? <laughs> no, Maya. That's Sparta. She won't tell us any... Uh, um, she won't tell us unless we say the right code word. The code word? Hmm. Sesame. It isn't that easy. If it's not Sesame, then it must be her mother maiden's name. That's how it always is. There's no point in having a password if it's always the same thing, Maya. And I guess she just doesn't want to talk to us about this. Maybe we should focus on asking about Glenn. Alright. Then tell me about Glenn. Um, about Mr. Elg. He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. But he did suffer from one or two bugs in his personality. Oh, like what? He was a bit of a loser. <laughs> a bit of a loser. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks to like the, uh, uh, to the High Daisy fucking Persona 4 comic dub. It's like, man, Hanachan's such a loser and you should find better friends. <laughs> and he's like, haha, that's funny, Saki Senpai. Don't touch me. I fucking love that video, it's so great. Perhaps that would be best, best way to describe it. That's what got him into trouble. What's the matter? He was a top programmer, I would even say he was a genius. So, he was really no trouble at all, a model employee. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just now you said something about him being in trouble. We gotta find out what this trouble was exactly. Hmm. Was the trouble... the betting? Ah, oh, shit, no. Hmm. Alright. Trouble. What about yourself, miss? Nothing. Huh. What trouble was he in? What can I... What can I give her that'll make her speak up? Meet with the tiger. I mean, those are the only two things that we got here. Yeah, I don't think she would react to any of that. Hmm. Maybe I can talk to the guys in the background. Maybe they know more about them. Hey, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, what's going on? He's really pounding that keyboard, isn't he? Wow. I bet there were prones and programmings come from, huh? I guess I shouldn't be resting on my laurels. Gotta expand my skill set and all that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I can become old CD's apprentice. Hmm. And what about your spirit medium training? Server's back here. Hey, look, Nick! It's a supercomputer! It looks like it's really smart and wise, does it? Computers are only as smart as the humans who use them. That explains why you don't use computers in our office. You work there too, Maya. Yeah, but at least I'm... Please, don't argue about something that's so trivial. Otherwise, computers will laugh at you. That doesn't... That doesn't sound... That doesn't sound well. That doesn't sound good at all. That th are you are you a human? She says she laugh at us, Nick. She's a human, Maya, not a computer. And if she is a computer, she's a damn cute one at that. Huh. I guess that's everything. Whoa, wait, hold up. What what happened? Something lit up. Those pillars almost look like they're moving. It's kind of unsettling. Nah, they just look a bit twisted or warped or whatever what I'm looking for. This office has designed with the futuristic... Ugh. This office was designed with the futuristic feel in mind. Futuristic? Yes. We try to imagine what things might look like in the future when we designed it. It helps to smooth and calm the soul. On second thought, I agree with you, Nick. This place is really unsettling just start getting on the ground like Squidward and just going, FUTURE!
adventure. All right. Huh. Trust being matches. Excuse me, madam. Do you know anything about this? Damn it. I guess... Huh. Do we have anything that, like, talks about loans here? Just losing? I think I have to come back with a... Yeah, I probably have to come back with a different... With different evidence here. Hmm. Alright. I was hoping that maybe MC Bonner would get her to talk, but nope. Alright, I'm assuming that's all I can do with her for now. Probably have to come back later. Let's head on over... ...to... ...uh... ...Tinder Linder. Oh! Okay, well there- I- I thought- I thought we at least run into someone... ...here. What about the detention- not the detention center, um, what am I thinking of? The, uh... ...the detective's agency. Office. Whatever. You know what I mean. The, um... Oops, I did not mean to go to my office. Criminal Affairs. There we go. What do we have going on in here? The main server just went up in smoke! Why the heck is there a press conference set up yet? The su the superintendent- wait, what? The superintendent's here already. Yeah. And there's a problem with the internet, too. I already told you to stop using your computer, Chief. But I'm watching videos online! I'm catching up on my Asian soap operas! It's gonna have to wait, Chief. I'm throwing the switch. No! Just when some young- some- what? Some young gee? Guy? Gee? Hmm? Was about to confess his son's hot to throt girl- wait, what? Confess to his son's hot to throt girlfriend. I have several questions! Wow, this place is really buzzing. Something must be going down. Something really big. Huh? What are you doing here, pal? Detective Gumshoe! You can't be here right now. You'll be roped into the briefing if you stay. Huh? We got big problems here today. Why? What's going on? It's a virus. A virus. Oh, shit. Alright. Let me... Is the police using... Is the programming data that they're using and stuff from blue screens? Are they being... You got... Mm, okay. A virus. There's a virus ripping through the precinct's computer system. But I really need to ask you some questions. Like, tell me about... This person. That lady's the boss of Blue Screen Inc, pal. Yeah, I figured she's clean. She's got nothing to hide. She seemed kind of like a doll to me. In a good way, and a bad way. Kind of makes you think she might be hiding something. Gumshoe. Oh yeah, this lady? She's she's clean, pal. She has nothing to hide, except for the fact that I kind of think she's hiding something. All right, that. Thank you, Gumshoe. You're just you're wonderful as always. Just a fucking hoot and a holler. All right, nothing there. All right, tell me what's going on with the computer virus. So what exactly is the computer virus detect, Gumshoe? I don't know. What? Look, I just go with the flow. All right, pal. Someone says some shit's fucked up. Some shit's fucked up. Someone says something's clean. Yeah, it's clean. And here I thought detectives were supposed to be somewhat knowledgeable. What's with the face, pal? You think you know what a virus is? Well, Nick, do you? A computer virus. Sure. I mean, only in simple terms, of course. Really? Wow, you know everything, Professor Nick. Yeah, I'm gonna call you Dr. Wright from now on. Hey, that sounds pretty cool. Don't you agree, Dr. Wright? Why do I get the feeling they're making fun of me? Okay, fine. 
I'm no expert, but I can at least explain the basics to the two of you. So what is a virus? A virus is a program that gets inside a computer and causes damage. Sometimes it says it's your buddy, your bonsai buddy. And then it puts a little goofy face on it. It's like, you don't want to delete me, do you? Damage. You mean it takes the machine go... <laughs> it makes the machine go boom and explode? No, the damage is, uh... Well, it's all internal. So, the insides go boom, right? Imagine all the case data you got stored up in your PC here in the station. A virus could wipe out all that. That's the kind of damage I'm talking about. Whoa, that's scary. Yeah. What's even more scarier than a virus are infectious is that it's infectious. Infectious? Most computers are connected together on a network, right? A virus can move from a machine to another over the network. So the virus just keeps spreading faster and faster. Hmm. Just like a real virus, huh? But Nick, why would anyone make up a program like that? Yeah. It takes... It takes... Fuck. <clears throat> yeah. It takes ages to type all that data. Why would you want to destroy it? No. People don't infect their own machines. They send the virus to someone else's. What? That's horrible. Oh, I get it. It's like you sneezing on Mr. Gadot so he catches a cold. Right? Then you wouldn't be able to turn up in then he wouldn't be able to turn up in court because he'd be too sick. You really shouldn't do stuff like that, Nick. It's wrong. Who? What? Where? When and why did the conversation jump to talking about me? Anyways, that's what a computer virus is. A bad program that causes damage. And all the different viruses have names, right? I kind of feel like I've heard the name of the virus we caught somewhere before. The name of the virus, huh? I feel like I've heard of that before, too. I don't even... What's the name of the virus? They didn't even tell me the name of the... What? Okay. I'm gonna say this once. So listen up. Yes. No matter how poor you get, never borrow money from a place like this, you hear? Mm. Okay. If you got money troubles, just go on a diet of instant noodles and hang in there. And we're not thinking about borrowing money. <laughs> we're not thinking about borrowing money, detective. We want information. Oh, is that all? Well, let's see. Tender lender is considered to be even fishier than the average illegal loan shark. And it seems to run into trouble just recently. Those guys have been pretty heavy handed calling in all their debts. Really? Don't go poking your nose around in their business, pal. You'll really regret it if they up if you upset that lady. All right, I get the picture. Hey, wait, what? Wait, hold up. What did you just say? That lady. Who's that lady? That sexy lady. <laughs> Who's this lady he's talking about, Nick? We better find out what the story is with this lady. Oh shit, I didn't mean to click that again, my bad. Oops. Uh, Am I supposed to give him a... With the lady? How am I supposed to... Get him to talk about her? I didn't... I'll be back, Gumshoe. I'll be, I'll be right back. Don't you, don't you go nowhere. Really? I gotta go to the detention center to go to the fucking restaurant? Alright. I guess I gotta start touching shit. Hey, look at this Persian-style coat. It's so chic. Looks more like a pimp coat to me. That's what I said! Guess I haven't got an eye for fashion. Hey, look at this. This suit seems the same color as the one you wear, Nick. Hmm, the same color as my suit. Huh. Keep your voice down, Maya. Nick, you gotta take a look at this. Some cake. I'll just leave it here for you. It, yeah, sure. Uh, thanks? 
Just wait here quietly. Otherwise... S sure! Did you hear that, Nick? Wait quietly, she said. Yeah, sure. I have my eye on you. Only so I can take care of you. Understand? I wouldn't be mind take being taken care of her. Huh? I'm scared, Nick! So? What are you getting so excited about before? Look on the label of the suit. That's... That's an attorney's badge. Made out of cardboard. Is the tiger a lawyer? No way! Look at this thing, it's made out of paper. For some reason, your badge only really looks really cheap to me, Nick. Why does everyone recognize an obvious fake badge when they see one? It seems like someone's having a terrible time. Erg. Come out from under the desk, Maya. <laughs> what did you... What are you two snooping around my office for? N nothing We're just... My precious carpet! He's got ash on my rug! You're gonna wish your ugly... You're gonna wish your ugly feet never came through my door. It's, it wasn't us, it was already like that. You just wanna argue with me? Is that what you're doing? You think you... You think you can take me on? I'm gonna flatten you two like pancakes. Turn you into new rugs. Oh. Oh. Don Tiger. Don... Don Tiger. <laughs> You're back. Oh, that voice. It's like evil seeping into your head through your ears. I'm sorry, Don Tiger. I knocked over the ashtray earlier, and... <laughs> Has she got a death wish or what? Oh, right. Huh? But forget about forget about it, Violet. It's just it's nothing. Wait, what? I ain't gonna get mad at you. You're too cute. You hear? I I agree with that. She can't be evil. She's too pretty. Just like uh, <laughs> just like um, what was her name? I can't remember her name. The girl from the first trial. Shit. Um. Uh, Dahlia. Just like Dahlia. Too cute to be evil. That's so unfair. Here, have some cookies. I just baked them. And you'll need some strong espresso while you're discussing your loan. <laughs> Phoenix Wright! Y yeah? Usually the crazy are just plain stupid to chase after me. I worked so hard, but now you gotta come and mess up my plan. So it was him. He's my phony. Why does he look like Iron Tager? <laughs> I look at him and I just think about Iron Tager from fucking, uh, Blaze Blue. Hey, but I don't care. No one gets in my way. What? I mean, I excuse me? You should have left the little girl at home, right? Huh? I have a few things I want to ask. No questions. This is the time- this is the last time we meet. Yeah, wait! Please! That was pretty weak, Nick. Fucking excuse me? Where were you? Cowering under the desk. You waited until he was out of earshot before you shouted at him. Like you were one to talk. I didn't hear you scream. Hold it either. The espresso. <laughs> and cookies. This woman is definitely not good for my heart. She's wonderful for mine, Phoenix. Now, what's what the tiger called? What the tiger called her? Violet. All right. Well, now I can talk to her. Tender Linder. So, I'm kind of curious about your company, Tender Linder. With the warm and friendly atmosphere you expect from a family-sized business. A cons- <laughs> A con- A cons- Oh god. Why am I blinking on the word and why can't I say it? I- Damn it! 
my stupidness is kicking in. That's great. A rate of interest and a, an attractive repayment policy. A retractive? Did I say retractive? Attractive, my bad. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling this sentence is not gonna end well? We will tenderly lend you that little bit extra. Here at Tender Lender. Hey Nick, things are a bit tight for Wright and Co. at the moment, aren't they? Hey Maya, shut the fuck up! I mean, there's that $500 you owe me from- I'm gonna hurt you. Why don't you take out a loan? Why don't you kick rocks? Would I like to take out a loan from this place? Not so much. Tender Linder is on your side. <laughs> I don't think it is. So, um, let's say I'm late with my repayment. What happens then? We give you more coffee. Strong coffee. Hmm, right, I think I'd rather skip town. Hey, just remember I can make strong coffee too, Nick. Strong tea as well. So, um, do you know about the incident we're investigating? What incident? Well, a man was poisoned in the restaurant just near here. That incident. Let me see. I was here that day with the manager. The manager being the tiger. Furo... Fur... what? Furio Tiger. Furio. Furio. Is it Fur... Is it Furio or Furio? It's probably Furio. It's probably pronounced Furio, right? So, that's what they call Tiger... That's what the Tiger thing comes from. I am not saying that, Maya. It's Phoenix. We got a real name, Nick. Hurry up and find out more about him. Xenofix, or the fuck her name is. Tell me more about Iron Tiger. Can I ask you about the tiger? I mean, Mr. Tiger. Cookie? I would like a cookie, thank you. Sure. How do you like my cookies? I baked them myself. Go ahead, Nick. The honor's all yours. No, 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 ladies first, Maya. <laughs> uh, no matter how I look at this, I just don't get it. What are the tiger and this... What are the tiger and the scary girl doing working together? We are lovers. Uh? It's not exactly coming across in your tone of voice. I'm not sure if I'm scared or jealous. And I owned Don Tiger in my life. He is the one who saved me. The tiger saved you? Please, address him properly as Don Tiger. Otherwise, I'll have to. Alright, alright. Don Tiger, of course. I'm sorry. He saved her life. I'm sure that I know how that happened. What do you do, crash into her with a bike? I'm very frail, you see. Just recently, I died once. Remember earlier when I said, uh... Maybe she, maybe she was a ghost. I think I was right. You died? About four months ago. The doctor said to abandon all hope. I guess they were expecting her to take a boat ride across the river Styx. But Don Tiger, he saved me. He gave up everything. Everything. When I found out what he had done for me, I was happy. No offense. But I'm finding that a little hard to believe. I decided I'd pay him back. <laughs> Relationship goals. <laughs> I'll pay him back my life by serving him coffee and espresso. I still wonder. <laughs> I still wonder what's. <laughs> I still wonder about what's in her coffee. So, oh my God. Uh, the moment Phoenix said that, I had a flashback to a. There's an anime called uh, what is it? A World Without Dirty Jokes or something like that. And there's this one character. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she's like, do you like my cookies? He's like, yeah. She's like, I put my love juice in it. He's like, what? <laughs> what did you do? So is that why you got the bandage around your head? <laughs> this? A bandage? Hmm. 
So what's the story with the bandage? They put it on after the operation. Uh huh? Operation? It's just a little injury. A little fatal injury. A fatal injury? Maya just suffered one herself by the sound of it. So, that injury you were talking about before when you said you died. Hmm. Oh, that is a lot. Uh, she really creeps me out, Nick. Same here. But we gotta find out the truth. Alright, well, thank you, Miss Violet. We will see you later. I have to, I have to ask. I have to wonder. Oh, we don't know what. He's 42? Fuck! Possibly part of the staff of Tinder Linder. A thoroughly bitter person. Hmm. Okay. Guess we can go hang out with Gumshoe now. Alright, Gumshoe. Tell me what you know about Violet. There we go. That girl who works over at Tender Lender? You want to stay away from her, okay? I mean it. She does look kind of unforgiving, doesn't she? That sounds to be... That should be the least of your worries, Bo. What's that supposed to mean? What could be worse? Her name... Vi Violet... I oh, fuck, god damn it. Cada Cadaverini? Oh, ha, I get... Oh, I get... Ah, uh, cuz she died, he's supposed to be a cadaver. <laughs> She's the only grandfather to. Br what? Bruto. Bruto? Bruto. <laughs> they really did that. <laughs> Bruto Cadaverini. It's like, it's like a cadaver. Hold up. She's supposed to be dead, so she's supposed to be a cadaver, but she escaped death. Like she's Houdini, so you got Cadaverini. Aha! It's fucking stupid. <laughs> Do you know who that is, Nick? Never heard of him. Yeah. Bruno Cadaverini, the boss of the Cadaverini family. The Cadaverinis. That's one scary sounding family. We can't touch them, they're way too powerful for the police. But you're thinking of taking them on. Aren't you? No! I don't remember ever saying I was gonna do that. I better get some more info about the Gumshoe. Uh, about Gumshoe. From Gumshoe about the family. It's all in the family. I'm not sure if I really want to get involved in this, but who are the Cadaverinis? Who are they? A scary bunch of people, that's it. And you're a cop, and you're scared? What's that about? Trust me, it doesn't matter if you're a kid or a cop. These guys are scared. They got some serious clout in the cr The word clout coming from Gumshoe. Wow. <laughs> they got some serious clout on the SoundCloud. We can't touch them. They got too much moolah. Moolah? As in... As in mucho dinero. <laughs> they pretty much control all the cash in the city's bank market. Oh, bank market? My bad. Black market. Huh? And that includes Tinder Lender, I take it. Sure. No one stands up to Bruno Cat Bruno? Br Am I saying that right? Bruno Cav- Bruno Cadaverini. <laughs> and I mean no one. Interesting. So, Viola's the granddaughter of some mafia boss then. Yeah, and everyone knows how much Bruno loves his little girl. She means everything to him. So, how does she end up at Tender Lender? I don't know, pal. But I heard she and the boss of Tender Lender are pretty tight. Tight? That's what it says in the file I read related to Maggie's case. Sounds like a pretty important clue. Alright, well, thank you for that insight. Also, Gumshoe, do you know anything about... Sorry, I just wanted to show him that. 
see if there was any reaction. Uh, know anything about... Tiger. Oh, this guy, the tiger? Is he famous? Yeah, this guy's not a lone sh- wait, this guy's not a lone shark, you know? Nope, he's a big lone cat. He's one cool cat. Hence the name. Don't pay him back, and you better say your prayers, because he'll eat you alive. You're shaking, detective. Like a leaf. I'm just, you know, kind of on edge at the moment, if you know what I mean. Alright, we'll tell him about Cadaverini. I wouldn't go flashing that photo around if I were you, Poe. Why not? That guy rules the criminal underworld. You could get yourself in serious trouble. I'm talking say your prayers trouble. You're shaking, detective. Like a leaf. I'm just, you know, kind of on edge. Alright. Wow. We are fucked, aren't we? <laughs> we are thoroughly fucked. That's wonderful. Alright, oh. Since we're here, Maggie. This guy. Holy smokes, that's him! Huh? That's your phony, Mr. Wright. Just look at that ridiculous suntan. Mm, for the record, I'm not sunburned like an overdrive tomato, so I don't know how. He told me he had on he's been on a business trip to Hawaii and that's where he got that tan. I'm not hearing this. <laughs> he's like, I ain't hearing this. I'm not a part of this. Alright. Kitchen. I would assume that the chef might be back. Alright. Move on to, uh... Blue screen. You. You had something to hide from me. Now I'm gonna flash this photo in your face. Oh. I guess, I guess that didn't work. Okay. Now I feel... Now I feel stupid. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna flash this photo in your face. Uh oh. Alright, that one didn't work either. Okay. I'll be back for you. You're hiding something. I know you are. Alright. Move on over to Tinder Linder. Let's see. Let me make sure I save, because it's been a while since I save, and I don't want anything crazy happening. There we go. Alright, let's see. Talk to me. Oh my bad, I have to present the thing. My bad, I have to present it. Totally forgot. Alright. Present. Well, bam! Let's see what we got. The head bandage. You said the bandage around your head was from an operation. You also said you suffered a fatal injury to the head, correct? Yes. The operation was very difficult, apparently. Now, by fatal injury, you mean you were hurt very badly somehow, right? Hmm. Did the injury in question have something to do with this? Well, donuts? Huh? I baked them myself. Homemade donuts. What's inside? Jam? And, uh... I'm sorry, but I didn't quite catch that. Hmm. Thanks, but no thanks. I think I'll pass. I guess that was a flop. What happened to this woman? I have such a huge bandage on her head. Must be some piece of evidence that will prompt her to tell me what happened. Hmm. Homemade- wait, I got a trophy for homemade donuts? Awesome! I don't know why I'm so happy about that, but I am. Alright. Does it have anything to do with... Okay. Nothing. You win this round. Also, since I'm here, check this out. About this. More coffee? You must have more. I must not. No. No thanks, I had enough, really. 
I'm not thirsty. <laughs> I don't... I don't leave the office. I can't tell you about anything except Don Tiger. Oh, well... If you want to tell me about Don Tiger, go ahead. Can I ask you about the tiger? I mean, Mr. Tiger? Oh, wait, we did this already. Okay, my bad. My bad. I don't want to do this. But you leave me no choice. Huh! This man's your grandfather, right? Carrying a picture like that around with you. You should watch your back. Thanks for the advice. The family is always watching me from the shadows. The family? I thought I saw something suspicious under the corner of the rug. One wrong move and you might disappear forever. This feels like Halloween, only a whole lot more real and a whole lot scarier too. All right. Do you know anything about this lady? Hmm. No, you don't. What about Mr. Glenn? More coffee? All right. Nothing there too. What about Armstrong? Saw you talking to him. Nothing. Hmm. about this? You are... You are one tough cookie. What about the paper badge? God damn it. What about MC Bomber? What about the cyanide? You are... Very difficult, miss. Alright, I give up. You have nothing for me. <laughs> you. You know anything about, uh, this? No. Anything about her? Are you a betting man? Alright. Oh wait, no, fuck. What am I doing? What am I doing? Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Tinder lender. This one. Ha! Ah. Oh, come on. It says meet the tiger on it. All right. Fuck. Okay. All right. All right. You win. You win this round, lady. Nothing in the kitchen. Not here. The chef has the chef has thoroughly fucked off. That's great. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um let's see. Maybe Maggie might have some more information on things. Ah, is that your attorney's badge? Actually, it's a fake. Holy smokes. That's it. Huh? That's the badge your phony had, Mr. Wright. You got a you got duped by this? But it's a complete different it's a completely different color. And what about the fact that it's made out of paper? He said the badge got a tan as well while he was in Hawaii on a business. I'm beginning to see how my phony was able to gain her trust. Wow, that's you're 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 amazing. You're fucking unbelievable, Maggie. I love you. I showed her I showed her this, right? I believe I showed her this. I know you should be on the police force. Okay. Really? She wouldn't say anything about the disc? Huh. Do you know anything about... the lady? Nope. Nothing. Hmm. Really? Match is found laying on Tinder Lender. Maybe I can show that to, uh, to Violet. Moving on back. Tinder Lender. What about the matches? Damn it! You win this round, yet again. She's laughing at me. I don't like it. She has my number on everything. Hmm.
Oh. Oh, wow. Why didn't I show her that? Hold up. Ah! Come on, you can't wheels with your- Come on, it has your company name on it. You just- You're just- You're just fucking- You're just a pain in my ass, aren't you? Alright. Hmm. What can I show you that gets you to talk? Yeah, not that. Oh, wait. Oops. I did not mean to skip all that. My bad. Is there a, is there a log that I can check? No. My bad. <laughs> if it's not sesame, then, oh, wait, no. All right, never mind. No, it's the same thing. We didn't skip anything useful. All right. It just, it just weirded me out for some reason. I showed her the paper badge, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I thought I skipped something important for a moment. I got a little scared. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Come on, lady, you gotta know something. About Mr. Elg, top programmer, personality bugs, be a loser. What's the matter? Uh, says something about being in trouble. We gotta find out what exactly trouble was. But we don't have anything like. See, I thought this would work, but it didn't. This didn't work either. Is it, uh... Is it the medicine? No. What the hell? Huh. Lady, you are an enigma to me. Hmm. Blueprints of crime scene. Photo taken from near the kitchen. Winning ticket, half million dollars, found during the body search. What the hell, lady? Oh. Well. Doesn't that make me look stupid? I'm about Mr. Elg. Was he in some kind of trouble? I'm sorry. Why would you think that? I thought you said something about it just now. He said he got himself into trouble because he was a bit of a loser. Oh, here we go with this shit. Three psychic locks. Hmm. I guess Mr. Elg, like every other man, has his own pile of secrets. Alright. Now we can get to the bottom of this shit. So, how about you tell me what kind of trouble Mr. Elg was in? I'm sorry, sir, but we don't deal with troubleshooting here. Perhaps you'd like to speak to someone in customer service. What's she talking about? I guess I better just take a shot and see where it gets me. Miss Basil, let me ask you something. Did Mr. Elg troubles have something to do with this? What is that? A bunch of horse racing tickets. All loser, all losing ones. With that many tickets, you could get one dollar at the recycling center. You good people are, you good people are very, very bad. Wait, what? <laughs> Cashing in on others' misfortunes is immoral. Is that a whiff of hypocrisy? Of hypocrisy, I smell. But what is this relevance? What is the relevance to these tickets? The victim, Mr. Glenn, he had a gambling habit, didn't he? I don't think that's a logical conclusion based on the facts. Everyone likes to go to the races from time to time. Yeah, but not everyone buys this many tickets. 
Anyways, I don't believe that proves anything on its own. You're right, but I'm not through yet. Mr. L gambling wasn't restricted to horse races, was it? It was also restricted to... Uh... Most thrilling 10 million of your life ever. Ha! Really? If you're careless, you can lose everything. Your money, people's trust. Alright, lady. Damn. Anyways, I don't believe that proves anything on its own. The lottery? Horse racing? He bought a lot of tickets and lost a lot of times. That's gotta have hurt his wallet pretty bad, don't you think? Maybe... Maybe bad enough to be the cause of some pretty serious trouble, perhaps. No! You're right, Glint did have a gambling habit. You good people must not follow his example. Do you understand? Trust me, even if I wanted to, I don't exactly have the money to buy any. Because everyone in this world is broke, apparently. <laughs> but if you win, there's no problem, is there? And Glenn had a winning ticket, didn't he? For half a million dollars. Yeah, but... It's hard to imagine how he could have been in trouble, then, is it? It's true that Mr. Elge won half a million dollars. In the end. But that was his first stroke of luck. He was in deep trouble before that. Deep trouble? What do you mean? His real problems was with someone and something more terrifying than f and ferocious. Ha! Mr. Elg met with someone on the day he was killed. He even made a note on his calendar about meeting the tiger. What is the relevance of that? Are you trying to suggest Glenn was meeting... Uh, was me wait, Glenn was meeting him to discuss his debt? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Also, that's interesting, because I ain't saying nothing about no debt. You said it. I just hit my microphone. But I have never heard of anything about this tiger before. Maybe he's not even human. Maybe he's really a tiger. I'm no programmer, but does she really expect me to buy such m messed up logic? In that case, I think it's time to introduce you to the tiger. El Tigre. Uh, Fur Furio? Fuck. Here's a name. Furio Tiger, or Tiger, aka the Tiger, is the boss of a loan office called Tinder Lender. This is who Mr. Elg met with on the day of his murder. And the only thing a loan shark would talk to him about would be a debt. No! It's true that Glenn had racked up quite a bit of debt from the gambling habit. About $100,000, I think. $100,000, yeah. But I heard he won the lottery, so he should have been in the clear. Shame Maggie couldn't get a bit of that good luck. Okay. So the guy got lucky and won the lottery. But what if he didn't win? What, had, what was his plan then? Well, this isn't easy to say, but... He said he would use his talents to repay the money. His talents? I suspect he was talking about programming. What computer program is worth $100,000? Perhaps you good people should have... Oh, should have. Perhaps you good people should leave so I can get back to my work. I'm so close to cracking her. The program in question... Was it by any chance that... Oh, it wasn't a... Oh, it wasn't a mixtape. It was a virus. MC Vomer's the name of the virus. Oh, come on. Without the necessary data, there's really no way I can access that information. I know Mr. Ellis created some sort of program. She can't deny it if I show her the program itself as evidence. So, oh, fucking hell. Oh, no. Oh, man, damn it. Do I gotta show it to Gumshoe? Fuck. God. God damn it. <laughs> gumshoe. Take the Gumshoe about this. What? Huh? This is it. This stupid name, I remember it now. I thought so, here it comes. Don't just nod to yourself and keep me in the dark, Nick. What's going on? It's okay, Maya. You don't have to cry about it. No one can hurt you anymore. 
the name scribbled on the sports paper and written on the CD. That's the name of the virus. MC Bomber. What? Yeah. The virus that just infected everyone's computers in the station. It's MC Bomber. Can you give us any more details, please? We already knew about the MC Bomber virus from a while back. A group of criminals- uh, criminals? Why'd I say like- A group of criminals? <laughs> a group of criminals issued a series of demands to head the- Huh? What? To head the- huh? I mixed those words. To the head honchos of law enforcement. They threatened to release the virus in their demands if their demands weren't met. Who were they? I don't know. Some hotshots from the criminal underworld would be my guess. Now the virus has been released, huh? Yeah, it's in every computer, and even public office, and in, in every public office in the city. Everyone's going nuts. They're hopping around like they're dancing at a carnival. At Carnival. All this stuff with criminals and viruses, it almost feels like we're in a sci-fi movie. What was that movie with with the uh, Sandra Bullock, where she was a fucking like programmer at home? That was a good movie. I forgot what it was called. Damn it! Is it like it's something like really generic? It's like it's like the glitch or like the hack or something like that. Which one? She's in a lot of movies. Yeah, it's a uh, she's like a not Ocean's Nine, not the Heat. It's not the Heat. It's something very like generic. Fuck. Like, she meets, a, she meets a guy, right, who ends up to be, like, an assassin, and he tries to kill her. Fuck. Oh, it's bothering me right now. Mmm. Fuck. Let me look at it. I'm about to look it up. It's really bothering me right now. Fucking, uh... Sandra Bullock movie with computers. It's called The Net. That's what it's called. It's called The Net. It's been a long time since I watched that shit. It was an, it was an okay movie. It wasn't that bad. But yeah, like someone steals her identity or some shit over the net or something like that. Or she meets like a pen pal or some shit. If fucking she goes home and like no one knows who she is. Never seen it. It's okay. It's, it's a pretty... It's a pretty all right movie for the time it came out, you know? All right. Apparently the programmer who made the virus was a real genius or something. The focus right now is on tracing the route of this virus and on the black market. You mean someone put this virus up for sale? Yeah, and because they're so powerful. They're estimating its price tag was in the millions of dollars. In the millions? A virus can be worth that much? MC Bomber. I can't believe it! I almost forgot the most important thing! And that is... You know, the lunchbox! How'd everything go? What? Lunchbox? You remembered? The weenies? I hate weenies! Weenie Hunt General! <laughs> oh yeah, those weenies. So, how did my weenies taste when they went down the hatch? That is, a, that is a sentence that he said. Well, it was delicious. Yeah, that's what she said. Really? Uh, well, not exactly. Don't worry about it, pal. I figured something would happen, so I came prepared. Prepared? What do you mean? I made a jumbo lunchbox. Oh. Do me a favor again, pal, and deliver this. This sure is heavy, this heavy burden. More ways than one. I just... I can just imagine Maggie's little eyes sparkling with joy when you bring her that. Weenies. Again, Nick. Tell me we don't have to eat all these two. Oh my god, they really gave us weenies. <laughs> I really can't eat anymore. Well, that's a first, Maya. Hey! Oh, I feel so sad now. <laughs> Oh. Okay. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. She said it herself. She she said she likes meat. 
Hey, Violet, are you hungry perchance? About this. All right, she, I'm just checking. She said it herself. <laughs> All right. Wow, Maggie just like fucked off. Like royally fucked off. All right, uh, Chespian. Moo, blue screens. You. You're a pain in my ass. Alright. Has something to do with this. Alright. Gambling wasn't restricted to horse racing. Hiya! Real problem. Some terrifying and ferocious. There you go. All right. Well, this is it, isn't it? This is the virus that infected computers worldwide as we speak. MC Bomber. No. You got nothing left to hide, lady. Awesome. All right. Glenn Head had more processing power than any computer. But it had been infected with a gambling virus. Glenn was in too deep. Do you mean he was in debt? Yes. $100,000 in debt. Not an easy amount to repay. So? He said he was take he was taking on some extra work. Something a bit risky. Risky? How? Maybe he was gonna become a waitress at Chespian. Where do you come up with these ideas? <laughs> so, it's safe to say Mr. Elg was the creator of this virus, huh? The MC Bomber virus? Yes. It was a work of genius in a bad sort of way, of course, but still genius. Something like that would probably fetch several million dollars on the black market. Inconceivable. Gumshoe was right on right on the change. This date, December 3rd, this is the mar uh, this is marked on his calendar. That was his deadline for repaying his debt. MC Bomber updated in the court records. I guess he won't be I guess we won't be needing these anymore. <laughs> Why does Maya look so sad about it? Use the trash can, Nick! No. He made me sad. All right. Now that we have that, wait. What? What piece of evidence did we get from that? <laughs> Potentially worth millions of dollars. Uh. What was the evidence we got for that? <laughs> Did it just update this? Potentially worth a million dollars? Or did it update, uh, Glenn's profile? What got updated? <laughs> oh well. <laughs> oh well, I guess I'll find out later. Maybe the chef is back? Nope. Alright. Well, blue screen is done, it seems. Maggie's gone. Hmm. Ladies boss, blue screens. Figure she's clean. Alright. Nothing new there. Hmm. We talked about him already, right? Won't go flash in that picture. Okay, yeah. We did that. Uh, don't forget to give to Maggie, okay? But they don't allow presents and prisoners in the detention center, right? Hey, you're right. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm counting on you to get it to her somehow. I'm a lawyer, not a delivery boy, Gumshoe. Oh. So 
Sorry, pal. Okay. Can't help you out if I don't have any info. Yep. Alright. So, uh... So what am I missing? What... Hmm... Gotta listen to the music a little bit, I love it. Alright, how the fuck do I get to, uh... I gotta go through the detention center. To get the trust bin. I guess we're heading back to, um... Whatchamacallit? Tinder Linder. Alright. Tell me what you know. Fuck. Hmm. What would... What would her accident have to do... With... Because it wasn't the bike, for some reason. The wheel guard is all smashed up. Uh. Article from December 5th says... Trounced. No, I was trounced, and my client was found guilty. Hmm. Left the doodle behind. What would <sighs> broke the vase? I'm missing something. Is there something still in the office that I haven't seen? Let's see. This round doll thing is called the uh, Dorama, I think. I figure I'd read a book or two and be more cultured, in case you were wondering. You mean you weren't making stuff up for a change? Hey, I bet you also didn't know that no matter what the lowest- Wait, what? What? I bet you also didn't know that no matter what, he'll always ride himself. Go on, Nick. Give him a good shove. Only if I feel like dying. Now, this yellow thing, this is Japanese chess piece. I think it's a king. Not that I'm an expert or anything. I'm more of a re reverse it. What? Reversey? Revert? Whatever, Maya. Assuming she knows what she's talking about. These aren't actually your typical mobster wannabe items. They're not trophies, are they? Hey, there's a piece of paper sticking out from under here. What is it? A repair bill. Looks like he did some repair work on his car. Oh, there's a car accident. 15,000 to replace a bumper and a light. That's insane. Oh, he he did not. It was it was in a hit and run. The car is registered to the Cadaverinis. Huh? So it's not even the Tiger car? Why would someone else repair bill? Why would someone else repair bill be the Tiger's office? Oh. Okay. All right. Well, now we got what we need. Okay. Your time is up. You're gonna lose this time for sure. The head bandage. You said that the bandage around your head was from an operation. You also said you suffered a fatal injury to the head, correct? Yes. The operation was very difficult, apparently. Now, by fatal injury, do you mean you were hurt very badly somehow? Did the injury in question have something to do with this? Oh, we're getting somewhere. I have here a car repair bill. From this, it seems pretty obvious that the car was involved in an accident. Let me see that. This bill is made out to the Cadaverinis. Yes, it is. I don't think I ever introduced myself. Tell me. What do the Cadaverinis have to do with me? Something tells me she's not about to say hi and introduce herself. Alright then. The relationship with the Cadaverinis is very strong, and this is why. I know exactly who you are, Viola Cadaverini. You sustained that injury in a traffic accident, didn't you? It happened about four months ago. I was driving in one of our family cars when someone pulled out in front of me. 
It was a motorbike, or something like that. I don't remember it much. Anyways, I swear I tried to avoid it, but... It took a blow to the... I took a blow to the head. A bad one. Yeah, I can imagine. So what happened to the person on the bike? I'm guessing they didn't get away with injuries, the viola ca Wait, what? We're injuring the viola cadaverini, right? I don't know. What happened to them? They ran away. Or so I heard. Ran away. If they st if they stayed, I'd have... Does she not... What? Huh? What? Did the- did the injury cause her to forget things? Does she not know that- oh, fuck. It's possible. Could the person who committed the hit and run have been... It was this man, wasn't it? He was the case of your accident. He was the case- the cause of your accident. It wasn't Don Tiger. I refuse to believe it. We collided. The motorbike and my car. But Don Tiger isn't injured at all, is he? It was the Tiger who caused Violos to crash, I can feel it. Plus, one of her locks just broke. So she must suspect it was him too. I'm sorry, Miss Cadaverini. But I have proof that the Tiger was involved in a traffic accident on his bike. The fact that it's fucked up. The fact that you can use your eyes. It's not exactly a motorbike, but... Mr. Tiger rides around on a scooter, doesn't he? And you'll notice that the front wheel guard is badly damaged. Miss Cadaverini, you know the truth, don't you? This repair bill was paid by Furio Tiger. The Cadaverinis have known for ages who caused the accident, haven't they? It's possible, perhaps. Somewhere inside me, I know that that may be true. I knew it. But... Don Tiger still saved my life. The operation was very complicated. It was very, very expensive. How much we talking? Very, very, very expensive. She seems kind of hesitant about giving me an actual figure. I should back off. Well anyways, it was the Tiger who paid for it, right? After I recovered, Don Tiger told me. He said he paid for the operation because he cared about me. I believed him. Really? But do you honestly believe that to be true? Do you want to know what I think? I think he was scared of getting his nuts chopped off. I think the reason he paid for the operation was because of, uh, wasn't because of you, but because of someone else. Perhaps I shouldn't be saying this, but... Your grandfather, Bruto Cadaverini, controls a lot of dubious cash, right? And you are his beloved pride and joy. Sure, I don't know exactly how much the operation costs, but... If you weren't the granddaughter of Mr. Cadaverini... Do you think Mr. Tiger would have paid that money? One million... One million dollars. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Looks like I'm making her cry now. Four months ago, I was in a traffic accident. That's why I need the operation. When I woke up, they told me it was nothing serious. A simple procedure. Oh, really? Well, I guess if she recovered in four months, it could have been too big. They said the operation cost one million dollars. Uh, a million bucks? My grandfather ordered Don Tiger to pay. One million dollars. And compensation. Compensation? Huh? So, the procedure didn't cost that much, but in order to save his ass for compensation of fucking up the world, he had to pay up. It's underworld lingo for paying money to settle a score. Basically, pay or get into some serious trouble. But a million bucks. This has to be related to our poisoning case somehow. 
Huh. So he started a loan firm so he could make debts so that Glenn would have a loan. And then he took, and I guess he, I guess he didn't care about the one, the 100,000. He saw the virus, it would sell on the black market. Motive, kill him, take the virus, I'll sell it. One million dollar, debt settled. I wanted to believe him. I wanted to trust what Don Tiger said. He said it had nothing to do with my grandfather being Bruto Daverini. I wanted to believe he held me because he cared about me. Not about my grandfather. Aww! I'm making the evil girl cry. But I knew that wasn't really true. Wow, I'm so sorry. What he did to get money was... It was evil. Alright, let's be honest though. Let's be 100% honest here. Mob boss or not, wouldn't you, wouldn't you do everything in your power to protect this precious smile that we have yet to see? You said it was for all for me, so I, I helped him. You helped him? In what way? Here, take these. What are these? Medical papers? I'm Bruto Cadaverini's granddaughter. He had to pay compensation. He was made an offer. He simply couldn't refuse. Oh, what a tortured soul. Yellow's medical papers. A $1 million bill for cranial surgery. Payment was due last year. Hmm. Wow, I feel so bad for Viola. It's inexcusable. Huh? There are two things that I consider inexcusable. Poisoning and betrayal. Only a coward would hurt people using either of these tactics. Is everything alright, Nick? I'm sorry, Maya. I'm just having a bit of a personal connection to this one. We should get going. Right after we finish our espresso. Yeah. I wouldn't need to convince Viola of anything else, so I guess I can get rid of these. Repair bill? Done. Alright. Hmm. January 7th to SBN. Oh, bonjour! I've been waiting for you to return. Bullshit. Mr. Armstrong. Ah, oh, good timing. I was hoping to find you here. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, he hasn't got anything to say to you fellas. Ah, it's, it's Zinofif. <laughs> Who are you calling Zinopi? Ah. And she's gone. Come out from under the table already, Maya. Okay, hand it over. What? You just want to play games with me? I don't recommend that. The medical papers now. Uh-oh. I think he wants Viola Cadaverini's papers back. You mean this? The million dollar medical papers? Miss Cadaverini trusted you. That's why she said that she helped you. Forget about it. That girl's dumber than an elephant. Oh. 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 Oh, he did. Oh, you did, you did not. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Nothing good can come of this. Do you want to know what's sad? I'll tell you what's sad. And it ain't only her face. She thinks she's got power because she's Bruto's little girl. That's now that's sad. I can't let you have these papers. Tomorrow in court. I'm gonna expose what you did to get the one million dollars you used to pay this off. Are you crazy or something? I don't care if you wanna give it to me or not. There's two of us here. You got that? Two. I don't know, there's me, there's a super brolic macho man over there, and then there's Maya. Maya, quick, use your psychic powers. Fucking make him brain dead. Oh, come on! Uh, we... Oui. Mr. Armstrong, forgive me. I cannot argue with him. Uh, that's... that really hurt. 
Is that all you got? I'll be taking those papers now. Armstrong, get the lighter. Wait. Don't take it too hard, Phoenix Wright. That was so stupid. I should have let my guard down. Those medical papers were vital evidence. Hold it, pal. Detective Gumshoe! I'm saved! Detective? You think you're gonna stop me, copper? Beat it. Whoa. Come on, Gumshoe, keep it together. You guys, get out of here. Leave this guy to me. But, go, pal, and take this. If you get hurt, who's gonna look after Maggie, huh? All right. Thanks, Gumshoe. Wait, Nick, don't leave me behind. I'll get even with that guy tomorrow in court. Tinder Linder is going down. To be continued. That was fucking awesome. I like that. That made me feel happy. I'm a simple man with simple pleasures. I like simple things. Well, while we're continuing, right? Now's a great time to give a little reminder that we have new emotes available. I will now show them in chat. <laughs> Hold it. His great ace attorney waiting room. <laughs> We have some wonderful emotes that we have today. We have Fireflow, right? We have Pearl Patine, because we all know Pearl is the mastermind of everything. And for those of you who are so inclined to go and get, and go and get, um, if you get BTTV, you will have access to Sir Chad, in which, if you don't have BTTV, you won't see the animation playing right now. But if you do, you can see him right there. He's beautiful. Do I make my own emotes? No. These are made by... Uh, these were commissioned by a good friend of mine who is known as Volta Bass. You may have recognized his work from animations from the best friend, the super best friends, right? And he is currently... well. I say currently, but it, it has re it released now. Um, he recently worked with Jonathan Young on his new album. So some of the artwork on there is made by him as well. So if you feel so inclined, please head over to Twitter and give him some support. Volta Bass is really, he's a really talented artist. He's been doing it for a good handful of years. And I appreciate him very much. I wish the best for him. Now onwards to Phoenix Fright. Also, I just highly recommend that you guys get BTTV. It's just free. It's free. It's safe. Hook it up to your Twitch account. You get access to search had emote. It's great. Good morning, Mr. Wright. Good morning, Maggie. So, what do you think is going to happen today, sir? Yesterday's session didn't go so well and ended up on a giant mystery. That's true. And we still haven't solved a single part of it yet. Are you okay, Nick? Huh? Oh, um, yeah. Of course. I saw that. That little flash of the doubt in your eyes. No. That wasn't doubt. It was determination. Heh. <laughs> or not. Bad question. <laughs> uh. Also, welcome, Serena. I... I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right, because I have a problem where I see the name Sierra and Serena, and I fucking flip them. But, welcome. I hope you're having a lovely day. Lovely week. Why don't I believe you? It's nearly time, Maggie. You better get going to the defendant's seat. Roger. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. I'm counting on you. Hey, pal. No, I didn't give her the weenies. Hey, Detective Gumshoe, you're safe and alive. Quick stress Maggie out. She doesn't need that. How'd you know she was stressed? I was watching through the doorway. 
So I haven't heard about the Great Ace Attorney yet? What do you mean? Do you mean about the, uh, the announcement that they did recently? That they're bringing over the, um, the quote-unquote prequels? The ones that take place thousands of years ago. Because I heard about that. What? Yeah. Oh, you didn't hear that? Oh man, that was announced like earlier this week. Yeah, I said it in like one of my other, I said it in my Resident Evil stream. That's why I kind of like glossed over it. Yeah, um, they're bringing over those, uh, the games that take place like way back or whatever. Not thousands, just centuries. Just a century ago. Okay. So a hundred. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they're, uh, they're finally localizing those in, in a fucking two part, like, a, you know, two game collection for it. There still hasn't been word on any, like, um, remasters for the 3DS games or, um, or, you know, for Miles Edgeworth or whatever. So I'm still, so because they announced that, I think what I want to do next is, uh, when we do come back to Phoenix, right? Once we beat this, I think what I want to do next is, um, is play, is play that, right? And then I'll still hold off on the Miles game and, um, and, uh, the 3DS games just to see if, just to see if there's any, like, remasters later down the road, because, you know, like, E3 season's coming up, and there's gonna be a lot of announcements. And yes, I will be buying the game. Definitely. <laughs> it's going to Twitch for the great Ace Attorney streamer, so you can watch the playthroughs. I may not do it, depending on when it comes out, I may not do it, I may not do it when it launches, but I definitely will do it. Because there's a lot of games coming out, like, all at once. Thank you for the follow. I greatly appreciate it. Anyways, back to Phoenix Wright. You look like you've lost the case already. Show a bit of confidence, will you, pal? When does it launch? July- Oh shit, that's really close. There's also a bunch of other games coming out in July. Oh man, there's so much. Like, even like, even a week from now is RE8. Oh, by the way, we're going to be playing RE8 when that launches. I usually try not to play launch games because I know everyone's going to, you know, stream that once and no one's going to watch my shit. Because <laughs> who the fuck am I, right? But, um, RE8, I do want to launch it. We recently just went through RE4 and RE7. And I'm going to be uploading, hopefully this weekend I'll be able to upload those playthroughs, along with Sonic 06 and stuff like that, but, you know. You look like you lost the case already. Show a bit of confidence, will you, pal? Here, maybe this will help. Huh? Have you taken up aromatherapy too? Not in a million years, pal. Don't tell me that you don't remember this thing. Hmm. Come to think of it, that does look like one of those aromatherapy bottles. Probably watch a lot of... Ace Attorney replay is on Twitch. Okay. This is the small bottle that turned up in Tres Bien's kitchen a couple of days ago. Is it poison? Wow. Look at all these little bottles. Oh. The room, uh, the aromatherapy oils. He's got so many. They're overflowing onto the floor. Hey, wait a minute. There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Well, what do you know? And it doesn't have a label either. And... It doesn't smell. We finally got the an analysis results back in the lab. So, what is it? Is it the poison? I'm afraid not, pal. It's... medication. <gasps> it's his fucking prescription! Medication? Yeah, for ears. Topical use only, apparently. For ears? Do you mean... Yep. It's the medication Glenn was using for his ruptured eardrum. What was Glenn's ear medication doing in the kitchen? Small bottle has small bottle has been refiled into the courtroom. Evidence. What about the un unidentified fingerprints? Anything on that? Someone screwed up, so they only had time to analyze the context of the bottle. Another hour and they might have gotten something on the prints, but hmm, that's gonna that's gonna weaken the impact on the piece of evidence. Okay, pal, this is it. Make sure your defense is imp imp impregnag- Words! Impregna- mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me and words don't go well. <laughs> Make sure it's impenetrable. How about that? <laughs> impenetrable. Today I got it. Of course I got it. 
Today's trial, I'm gonna expose that guy for what he's done, or my name isn't Phoenix Wright. January 8th, 10 a.m. District Court Room, number four. Oh, Gadot, you sexy son of a bitch. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ready and waiting as always, Your Honor. Very good. Then we shall get underway at once. Yesterday, we heard the testimony of Mr. Victor Kudo. He claims to have witnessed the defiant putting a powder into the victim's coffee. However, the witness testimony was plagued with a number of problems. The mark on the rim of the cups shows that the victim drank it with his right hand. But according to the old man's testimony, he picked it up with his left. Thank you, Mr. Gadot. Furthermore, according to the witness account, the victim was listening to the radio with the earpiece in his left ear. Yet the victim's left eardrum was ruptured, which made him effectively deaf in that ear. It's amazing. It's amazing how many contradictions a single case can have, huh, Nick? Every time I hear the gulp, it gets to me. Ah, allow me to enlighten you, Your Honor. The world, you see, keeps turning, and we must turn with it. You lost me already, Godot. Don't let the mysterious, the mysterious, don't let the mysteries of yesterday's mystify you today. Only losers think like that. I've got to change with the times. I mean, I've got to change. You got to change with the times. That's one of my rules. Are you implying that you resolve these contradictions? Do you know the answers to these riddles? The old guy wasn't just throwing seeds in here. He was throwing us off at the scent. And today I'll prove it. Very well. Let the first witness take the stand. Oh god. And you are? Oh bonjour everyone. I am Jean Armstrong, the owner of the owner and head chef of Tedespian restaurant. Enchanted. Forgive me for asking witness, but are you a woman? Ooh la la, monsieur. As you can see, I am Le Pat and Perky Gentleman now. Huh. Um, on the day of the incident, you were in Terespian's kitchen. Isn't that right? With you, uh, it is, wait, what? With you, monsieur? Oh, with you. Okay. Everything feels right. Oh, fuck. Ha! Huh. Wow, he's totally on phase. Doesn't anything intimidate this guy? Very well, your testimony please witness. Please tell us please tell the court what happened that day at Trespian. We oui. At Trespian. When it all happened here with just two customers in my restaurant, I remember I was experimenting with some new art deco at the what? Oh new art decorations. Okay, cool. Like having a large mirror between the tables, for example. We, oui, perhaps, it was what the old man was looking at. The cup, the air piece, and the glass. He would have seen everything in reverse, no? Hmm. <laughs> Mirror. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even notice you were gone. <laughs> welcome back to the stream. Alright, let's see. A grand mirror. The most enormous mirror. All right. Don't we have a picture? And suddenly the mystery disappears. We have a picture of the crime scene. There's no mirrors. Like I said, the world keeps turning. So roll with it. Hmm. That would explain the coffee, the cup of coffee, oh, the coffee cup, and the earpiece conundrum. The mirror would have made everything appear back to front. What the heck? It's way too early in the morning for this to be happening to me. Now then, Mr. Wright, you can begin your cross-examination. Hmm. Muted the stream and wasn't watching, but I guess I was still here. It's okay. 
Uh, okay. When it's all happened in here... Alright, first of all. I'm assuming... I'm assuming that this would work, because there's no mirrors here whatsoever, so we're just gonna... As always, first of all, we're gonna have to save, because fucking, if I fuck it up, I'm gonna have to redo shit. But... I remember I was experimenting with some new art decorations, like having large mirrors between the tables. But you're a filthy, dirty liar. As Kadat said, roll with it. Really? It's clearly a con uh, clearly contradicts the uh, I thought. Well, you thought wrong, Phoenix. Objection denied. Fuck. Really? Come on, guys. It's a photo. All right, well, let's roll with it. How big of mirrors were we, are we talking here? Oof, something about four meters wide and uh, about two meters high? Let's see, if one meter is about a yard, holy glass is a frame. <laughs> holy glass in a frame, that's huge. I was intending to install it on the ceiling eventually. The ceiling? Was the mirror, was there a mirror on the ceiling? I don't remember. But I decided not to go through with it, in the end. What should I do? Should I ask him more about the mirror or not? No, 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 keep going. We got this. If you really have such a large mirror in the restaurant, someone would have noticed. But there's nothing about a mirror in Mr. Kudo's and Maggie's bride testimonies. But... Eh, come on, Gadot. You didn't ask, right? You, won't, you have only yourself to blame for such a sloppy work. What? A mirror was delivered to Trespian the day before the incident. Really? As Mr. Armstrong testified, he was carrying out some design changes. And as it turns out, he, did, he didn't actually use the mirror in the end. It just doesn't add up. If it didn't use the mirror, then why the fuck would they see any opposites? Even if the mirror was delivered to Trespian, it doesn't prove that it was in the restaurant on the day of the crime. Huh. If you want to doubt someone, Trite, Look in the mirror. I'm sure the person looking back at you will be dubious enough. Hmm. So the witness yesterday has seen the victim's reflection in the mirror. In the mirror that you chose not to use. Cut the earpiece glass would have been... Everything would have been reversed. Everything? You would have seen everything in reverse. Wait. Hey, Nick. We should take a second think about what old CD said in his testimony. How did he phrase it again? The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens. Wait, on the same side as the green lens of his specs. Think it means that Armstrong just moved it back to the original. Hmm. All right. No question. You can. But why would you mess with a crime scene? <laughs> no question. You can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear, without a doubt. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup. His left hand. If he saw everything he described reflected in the mirror, then everything he said... Uh, everything he said he saw on the left was actually on the right. And that clears up all the problems with the testimony, I guess. Or does it? Huh. It's kind of hard to believe everything... The fault... Everything's the fault of the mirror, but... Do you think old CD saw everything through a reflection? If he did, it would explain all the contradictions in his testimony. But that just makes the situation worse for Maggie. There's gotta be something in the old man's testimony. We gotta just dig a little deeper. Hmm. You gotta dig a little deeper. Alright, when it happened, just two customers in the restaurant. Let's press this. And who were the two customers exactly? Well, of course, the young man who died, and the other not-so-young man. Hmm. You're referring to yesterday's witness, I presume? What about the other man Maggie says she saw on the table? Something tells me Mr. Armstrong is planning to disclose his existence. We need some hard evidence bef- uh, We need some hard evidence first before we can bring him up, don't we? I guess I'll just have to try a different approach for the time being. Well, now I remember that song. Exactly. I was thinking about it. Princess and the Frog. You gotta dig a little deeper. <laughs> dig a little deeper. It really ain't that far. 
When you find out who you are, you find out what you need. Blue skies and sunshine, guaranteed. It's a great song, I love it. Like having a large mirror between the tables, for example. How big of a mirror are we talking about? Oof. Wait, did I press this already? Oh shit, my bad. I was too busy singing fucking Disney songs. I'll leave it for now. So the witness yesterday seen the victim reflected in the mirror. Alright. Oh man. Wait, what? Did I get- wait, what? Large mirrors, remember I was experimenting with some... What up happened? It's just two customers. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. Perhaps that what the old man was looking at. Normally, I expect people to know the difference between the reflection and a real object. Normally? How does normally come into this? That's lame, Trite. Even for you. Huh? Are you trying to say that if something isn't normal, it isn't possible? Is that it? What does this leave the porky-headed lawyer and the and the top-knot chick over there? And the ungodly and the ungodly cool guy with the mask over here, huh? That's right. Not the hair. I don't have a top knot. Mr. Godot is correct. A lack of normal of normal lack of normality is no bias for discounting an argument. Fucking Godot just feeling himself. Logic has won the day. Hmm. Alright. So something in the old man's testimony we have to use. Let's see. Uh let's see. From the doctor before the bag. Da -da 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 -da. Cyanide. Card the victims. Would it be the cup? It was program ward, HP over red eye. He is ungodly cool. I'm sorry, I have to I'm sorry, I have to press this again just to remember what the fuck Phoenix was saying. Everything in reverse. Alright. How do you phrase it again? He was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens. No question. You can lock me off if I'm wrong. It was left ear without a doubt. So if he saw the left ear, it would be the right ear. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. So the right hand. Alright, everything he said he saw on the left was actually on the right. And that clears up all the problems with his testimony, I guess, or does it? Huh. It's kind of hard to believe everything is falling in the mirror. Do you think old CD saw everything through a reflection? If he did, it would explain all the contradictions in his testimony. That just makes the situation worse for Maggie. There's gotta be something in the old man's testimony. Just gotta dig a little deeper. Hmm. So, are we trying to... Are we trying to prove that it was indeed on the left side? Hmm. Because I'm trying to... I think it might just be lost in here, but there are two contradictions. I'm just trying to figure out which side they're trying to say that it's on. Because if they're trying to say that he was seeing things on the right side, then we use the coffee cup. Because if it was through a mirror, he would see things on the left side. Uh, other than that... Has a small pocket. Stands... Huh. I mean, it can't hurt. It can't hurt to use the photo from the kitchen, which apparently that doesn't work, so. We also have the blueprints, right? So, you supposedly on the other side, left side, do do do. It's either. I think it's on this statement, and it's either the blueprint floor plans, or it's, um, the coffee. Okay. 
all right if it's not that then i'm gonna try the coffee cup then i'm probably wrong <laughs> most likely wrong remember experimenting with some art decorations two customers in their stop i'm gonna try Try to do the coffee. Hmm. I can also try Glenn himself. Aren't we are things that fall to the mirror? Remember I was experimenting? Large mirrors. Alright, we're gonna try Glenn himself. Hmm. Let's see. Phoenix says that there's something about could assess money, then it has to do something with the reflection. Seems like a good idea. That's what I'm trying to get at, but maybe I'm using the wrong statement? Mirror between tables. Perhaps what the old man was looking at. Your piece would have been seen everything on reverse. It might just be the wrong statement I'm using it on. Let's see. Call the police by payphone. Hmm. Warned by Maggie. what the old man was looking at Let's see maybe put Glenn on that one on which one on I just did that on this one. if it's on this one I just did that so it might just be a, it might just be a different statement well before I get myself killed right <laughs> uh this is what I, this is what I just saved right cool all right before I get myself killed here remember I was experimenting on the or maybe I just have to... Hmm. Alright, hold up. Just two customers in the restaurant. Remember I was experimenting with some art decorations, like having a large mirror. Maybe I don't have to, like, use evidence. Maybe I have to press in, like, a certain order as well. You know, press harder. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna do this to make sure that we have it. And then I'm gonna press the... And then I'm gonna press this and I'm gonna go back to the other statement. See if that works. It's definitely evidence. Hmm. Let's see. Alright. Well, let me just try... Mirror between the tables. The old man was looking at. No, the answer just won't say it. Fuck. What happens, customers? Result. Remember, I'm experimental with mirrors. I have a large mirror between the tables, for example. Perhaps it's what the old man was looking at. the earpiece and the glass. He would have seen everything in reverse. Victim was wearing over left eye. Left eardrum was ruptured. Yeah, he was wearing it over the left eye. Left ear was ruptured and he picked it up. He picked up the glass with his right hand. So everything wouldn't have been. Right? 
No, what is left hand? Okay. Doop, doop, doop. I could have sworn I, I could have sworn I pressed it on this, right? I didn't present it on that. I thought I did. Hmm. I guess I just did it on the wrong statement without realizing it. My bad. <laughs> the coffee cup, the earpiece, and the HMD. Let's think back over to Mr. Kudo's testimony for a second, shall we? The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens on his spec. No question. You can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was the left ear, without a doubt. Yeah, so I had the right answer, I guess, without realizing I just pressed it on the wrong fucking statement, like an idiot. So to summarize, we were told about the HMD and the earpiece were, uh, were on the victim's left side. Now, if Mr. Kudo saw all this as a reflection in the mirror, it means both the HMD and the earpiece were actually on the victim's right side. Exactement. You see, monsieur, now as you think about it, it's not so hard. Unfortunately, that's where that's where we run into a monumental contradiction in the facts. Because he his left ear was fractured or whatever, you know, ruptured. Mr. Kudos really did see everything in the mirror. Why is it that the HMD is now on the wrong side of his head? Order. Mr. Wright is correct. If the, witness genu if the witness genuinely observed the victim's reflection in the mirror, then we would expect the victim's earpiece to have been on the right side. Then I wasn't just hallucinating when you thought I didn't press it? Oh, okay, fuck. <laughs> yeah, no, that was my bad. I thought I did. I guess I just didn't. I, I just glanced over it. How bitter. That's right. You should have tasted... Wow. You should have tasted this bitterness. It'll claim you down in no time. It'll claim? It'll calm you down in no time. What the hell is wrong with me? Are we talking about your coffee? Or something completely different? You don't understand the way the witness thinks. How he thinks. You remember this, I presume? The I broke the vase sorry apology letter? I mean, Mr. Kudo's sworn testimony? Exactly. The old man has one very grievous habit, other than just throwing seeds. The more of an impression something makes, the more muddled his mind makes it. And what's the most striking thing about Mr. Elms? Clearly, it's the victim's earpiece. A earpiece? Eyepiece. <laughs> and that's my point. The old man strikes again. Mr. Elms HMD made a big impression on the old man. I saw the earpiece and those newfangled spectacles he was wearing. Oh, yes. They were both on his left ear. Do you hear his left ear? Huh. Well, trite. Uh, that's the worst, but best impression of Kudo ever. Wow, I really thought he was old CD for a minute there. That's good. Enough. I must agree that yesterday's witness was irresponsibly rash in such a, in much of his testimony. Bad luck, Nick. Looks like you boil. Looks like the boil of the contradiction you found is just a rash. Maya, what the fuck are you talking about? A mirror can't be can't be beaten by a handful of seeds, nor can a lie. So, what exactly was the old man looking at? Fill us in, Mr. Armstrong. Go on, tell the court. We're all ears. Oui, I can explain. Please, if you'll look at the plans of the restaurant. Saying he's good is the understatement of the century. <laughs> Allures! Is everyone sitting comfortably? I'm sitting good. The mirror was in the middle of the restaurant, dividing the two halves. There is only... Wait, what? Here is only one seat from which you can have seen an image of the victim. Alright. That is what, that's the seat and table next to the victim. Wait, what? That was the seat at the table next to the victims. 
that was where the old man was sitting. Alright. So you're saying the old man sat there. After the terrible incident occurred, I moved the mirror so it was not in the way. But naturally, I did not touch anything else. So I touched the crime scene, but I didn't touch the crime scene. <laughs> Alright. Hmm. I see no problems with the explanation we just heard. From the table next to the victim, Mr. Kudo could have seen the victim in the mirror. He could have. What a naughty little, what a naughty little croquette I am. Confusing all the men like this. On multiple levels. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We can keep up, except for the guy breaking out in the cold sweat over there again. I hate that guy. He said you didn't touch anything else apart from the mirror. Are you quite sure about that? Volunteers? Of course. Did I say volunteers? My bad. I, I just kind of went with the flow, you know? Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you please. All right. Let's see. Let's make sure we get a nice, good, juicy save here. All right. The mirror. All right, the mirror. It was in the middle of the restaurant, dividing halves. There's only one seat in which you could have seen the image. It was a seat that the victim. It was where the old man was sitting. After a terrible incident occurred, I removed the mirror. But naturally, I did not touch anything else. Really? Oh, we don't have the fingerprints. Fuck. Yeah. Huh. So that wouldn't just fly like that. Hmm. It's pretty strange though, isn't it? I mean, nobody mentioned anything about a really large mirror. You like, uh, you think someone would have, but Maggie didn't, and neither did Old CD. The neological explanation is that there's no mirror inside to be in that day. And I just gotta prove it, somehow. Alright, it's in the middle of the restaurant. But in two halves. So, run this by me again. The mirror was here, correct? We? We? Really? Because I know if you, I know if I were you, I would have put a mirror there. It would have been in the way. Look who's talking, Trite. Huh? You're obstructing my view, amongst other things. But this is my seat in the courtroom. Today's being charm is that it gives you the impression that you're the only customer. Temporarily placing a mirror in a spot would hardly be in the way. Unlike you, Trite. I tell you, Monsieur, the mirror was here, in the middle of the restaurant. Hmm. Only one seat from which you could have seen the image. Alright. At the terrible incident, I removed the mirror. Did you move the mirror while Mr. Kudo was off calling the police? We, oui. Exactamente. I carried it out of the restaurant. You moved a huge mirror like that all by yourself. What can I say? I know how to pick things up, handsome. Ugh. <laughs> Could Dot actually laughed at something? Well, given the witness's physique, I suppose it is possible. Did you move anything else from the crime scene? I looked at, I look like the, uh, ob, ob, hmm. obling type? Oblinging ob type? I don't even. I'll be honest. I don't know what the fuck that word is. But naturally, I did not touch anything else. All right, let's review the evidence, shall we? Twenty dollars, despite how unbelievable bad it is. Uh. I broke the vest at my seat. I'm sorry. Blueprints. Think a dot's laugh can cure cancer. <laughs> All right. Where by Maggie? Hmm. 
have to prove that the mirror wasn't there. So, why can you only see the victim from that from that peculiar seat? Peculiar? Particular seat. Monsieur, it is obvious now if you look at the plans, you will understand. The victim would have been reflected in the mirror like so. If you were sitting at the table next to him, you see everything. So, that seat old city was sitting at that day. When the poisoning happened, the old man was sitting to the table next to the victim. Why does that seem kind of odd? Hmm. Do they want me to use the floor plans? After the terrible incident, remove the mirror. mirror was in the middle of the restaurant divided into two halves. So, on this by me again, the mirror was here, correct? We? Okay, oh, I did do that already. My bad. Sorry. Hmm. I'm just trying to press every statement. We're sitting, had a terrible incident, moved the mirror, but naturally did not touch anything. I'm trying to think that After a terrible incident occurred, move the mirror. It was seat table. Objection. Your Honor, Mr. Kudo's words yesterday strongly contradicts Mr. Armstrong's testimony. This is the letter of apology that was written by Mr. Kudo, is it not? I realize it looks useless, Your Honor, but this is still a testimony. Huh. I guess useless people are only really good at identifying useless things. For relevance, does the scrap of paper have to the trial, Mr. Wright? Mr. Kudo's testimony is actually very relevant to the question at hand, Your Honor. Because it very clearly contradicts this with the piece of evidence. Uh ha ta 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 ha ta 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 no. Ta ta ta, would it be the floor plan? Where's the floor plan? Blueprints. Well, Your Honor. Well, I'm not sure the contradiction is as clear as you would like us to believe. Oh, perhaps you should reconsider that before. Damn it. Try again. Of course, I was wrong. Is there some proof that CD wasn't sent? Oh. <laughs> uh... We. Oui. I'll be delighted. Alright, I need something that goes with that. I need something that goes with the face. I'm gonna go with the face. The one seat you could have seen from is where the old man was sitting. His testimony. Alright. Because I just don't want to do that shit again. Ba ba ba! Relevance does a scrap of paper have with the trial, Mr. Wright? Ms. Kudo's testimony is actually very relevant to the question at hand, Your Honor? Because it verily contradicts this with the piece of evidence. With this piece of evidence. It would contradict... Does the photo show the other table? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. My bad. This piece of evidence contradicts with the testimony we have heard, Your Honor. The crime photo? Yes, this photo clearly shows something that theoretically should not exist. What on earth do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? 
she not exist? <laughs> Sounds like you're describing yourself, Trite. All right, Gadot. All right. All right. I, all right. You bastard. <laughs> now then, if the defense would please clarify that statement. What is something that should not exist? Ba ba da da ba ba da da ba 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 da ba. <laughs> He's a bit grumpy today. There's one thing that's clearly demonstrated by yesterday's testimony. Mr. Kudo broke the vase that was on the table where he was sitting. And yet, at the court, as the court can see, there's an unbroken vase on the table next to the victim. Because Mr. Kudos was not, in fact, sitting at the table next to the victim at all. Don't be an idiot, Trite. That's impossible. That seat's the only one Kudos could have seen the victim's reflection on. Exactly. Huh? There's only one conclusion we can draw from this contradiction. There was no mirror in Chesapeake that day. Your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, is an elaborate lie. Don't try to confuse the court, right? Obviously, the witness cleared, cleaned up the vase. While the police were taking their time getting the crime scene. Well, if that's true, then his fucking testimony's a lie anyways. Unfortunately, Mr. Gadot, that doesn't quite work for me. Mr. Armstrong already testified to the contrary in his own words. I did not touch anything else except the mirror. <laughs> oh, you're losing your cool. Well, witness, what do you have to say for yourself? Yeah. I was right. There was no mirror in the restaurant that day. In light of the revelation, we returned back to the original problem. Why did the victim have, any, have an earpiece in his ear which he could not hear? Huh. You only get one shot in life. There's no turning back. If you want to claim that the mirror wasn't there, Trite, then this problem is all yours. How do you explain what the old man saw? I don't know how to explain what the old man saw. I'll try my best. If I can answer this, then I'll then I'll be that much closer to the truth. Are you gonna be okay? Can you really solve this contradiction, Nick? No, the fuck I can't. There's one more. Uh, there's more than just this one contradiction, Maya. What do you mean? Not surprised that Kadat is mad. He when his witness keeps messing up his plans. Remember what Maggie told us. There was another man at the victim's table. And there was a sample CD on the victim's table. It all it all flies in the face of Mr. Kudo's testimony. And I think I know the reason why nothing in this case is adding up. Well, Mr. Wright, let's hear your answer. Yes, your honor. Let me just, I just want to save over that because we made a little bit further. The reason behind all the contradictions in Mr. Kudo's testimony is simple. The ear doctor made a mistake. The victim was a phony. He's a phony. A big fat phony. Uh, he was mistaken. Victim was a phony. The ear doctor made a mistake. Hmm. <laughs> it was the umbrella. Uh, huh, huh. Why'd you have to throw this one in there? <laughs> I don't think the air doctor would make a mistake. Am I gonna discredit his testimony? What the fuck? Victim was gone. Hmm. Maybe the doctor made a mistake. I, uh... I really don't think that's it. This should be easy for me, but for some reason I'm like doubting myself super hard. Fuck it! Clearly, Mr. Kudo made a mistake. Mr. Trite, you're the one who brought up all these contradictions. And, 
If you're trying to tell us the old man just made a mistake, we can wrap up this case right now with a guilty verdict. How about it, Mr. Wright? Should I just declare your client guilty? Is that the best you can come up with, Nick? Yeah, it was. Listen, I didn't want to doubt the doctor. I'll give you one more chance, right? One more chance all I got, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck it means the victim was a phony. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Like, the victim wasn't killed? <laughs> I believe we're looking at this the wrong way. It was actually the doctor's mistake. What? Yes, the doctor got the wrong ear. Well, I believe we saw the autopsy report yesterday. Stated, oh yeah, I forgot we had the autopsy. That thing was so useless to me. i am be honest, forgot it even existed. I'm beginning to wonder. Weird. All right, well, fuck. Fuck you guys. Fuck all of you. <laughs> That's enough. Court's in session. That's like weird wording. What they mean... What the hell do they mean by the victim was a phony? Like he pretend to be dead? Is that like, is that what's happening? There's no way, there's no way that's the what? <laughs> I'm confused by that wording. Explain to me, Phoenix. This case is riddled with contradictions, yet there's one very simple answer that clears them all up. And what is that? The incident Mr. Kudo witnessed and the incident the victim experienced were two complete different events. Firebird will explain it. <laughs> he needs to explain it because I have no idea what the fuck Phoenix is on about right now. Yes. The victim that Mr. Kudo saw wasn't Mr. Glenelg. It was an imposter, a phony pretending to be him. Obviously, unlike the victim, there was nothing wrong with the imposter's left eardrum. That's how he ended up wearing the earpiece in the- Imagine being in court and pulling this shit off. It was a- it was a stunt double. Like, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, Phoenix. You're like... Phoenix is like way ahead of me on this one. Uh, Glenn is sus. Order. Order in the court. Settle down or I'll clear the courtroom. <laughs> I did a funny. Quiet, Gramps. What did you clear out of there? Huh? What did you say? That's right. Are you saying that what Mr. Kudo saw was a setup? Yes. Someone pretended to be Glenn and acted out the whole coffee poisoning. All for the express purpose of creating a witness out of one Mr. Victor Kudo. Get real, Trite. Why would anyone do that? Isn't it obvious? The thing Mr. Kudo was most intent about was uh, most intent about in his testimony. Intent? Why am I saying? Insistent about in his testimony was... The server girl brought him a javachino. But she, ju but she put something in it. That's the serving girl, right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. It's so hard to believe, but... There was one, and only one reason to show Mr. Kudo this fake poisoning. To show Maggie Bird in the act of poisoning the coffin. Are you insinuating that the waitress in the old man's story was a fake as well? It's true that there was... It's true that there was no other customers in the restaurant at the time, but... It's also true that the chef was there. He would have noticed what was happening. That's right. Well, witness, if your restaurant really... If your restaurant really was the scene of such thera theatrics, who would have known about it? Uh, you would have known about it, correct? Oh la la. Most difficult for me. No, it's quite simple. All you have to do is testify. You're under oath, after all. Was there, in fact, a phony at Trespian that day? The defense demands that Mr. Armstrong tells the whole truth about what happened. The defense request for additional testimony is accepted. You will accurately explain in detail the events in the restaurant that day.
All right. The victim, Monsieur L, came to my restaurant alone. I remember the old man arrived not, at, not long after him. Here, were the, uh, there were no other customers. When he got word, oh, uh, when he got word he won the lottery, Elk became very excited. It was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. None, what? None there, what? There was no time for, oh fuck, his, his accent is killing me. There was no time for a phony to do the acting. Hmm. Just so we're clear, there's no mirror in the restaurant after all. Alright, forgive me, Your Honor. I lied because I wanted the mess to be cleared up quickly. What you had just done, commit perjury. Perjury. Ugh. Perjury. Perjury? Perjury. Perjury. Perjury? How do you pronounce that? <laughs> Mr. Armstrong, I will decide how to punish you later. Oh, punishment. For now, we will hear your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. He took the perjury charge a bit too well. But I'm guessing he'll be in more serious trouble after the cross-examination. Thank you, Chuba. You can read it just fine. Yeah, I didn't have the best education system. I'm mostly self-taught. Uh, do 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 do. The victim came there restaurant alone. I remember when old man arrived not long after him. There was no other customers. Got word he won the lottery, became very excited. It was approximately five minutes later. Hmm. Is it possible that. Huh. Is it possible that they hmm, they poisoned him earlier, hit him in the back, staged it, and then after they staged it, and when no, Mr. Kudo went to go get the police, within that five minute frames they switched the bodies out? No, I don't think. I don't think. That seems like too much work. <laughs> it's approximately five minutes later. All right. There was no other customers. Old man arrived not long after him. Victim came to the restaurant alone. Was he alone at his table as well? We. Oui, I saw him from the kitchen. Yet the defendant, Miss Bird, remembers it differently. She swears that there was another man at the victim's table. Huh. Unfortunately for you, Trite, yesterday's witness also testified that the victim was alone. Ha. Huh. You know, seeing you squirm like this reminds me of a certain coffee's bittersweet bite. What kind of coffee has he been drinking? It's not coffee, it's love. It's love that's bittersweet. Of course you would know all about that, Maya. Hearing Maya say that makes her seem wise all of a sudden. It's love, Phoenix. I remember the old man arrived not long after him. How long? 20 minutes? By old man, you mean Victor Kudo, correct? Wait, oui. he comes often and for my special coffee. Does Maya have something for a good dot? Everybody has something for a good dot. <laughs> I drank your coffee once, Mr. Armstrong. It's special, I'll give you that. It's worth a sip just for the experience. Oh, you make me so happy, Monsieur. You're most welcome, anytime. I said it was worth one sip, and nothing more. So Mr. Kudo arrived at the restaurant around the same time as the victim. Maybe I should ask about his arrival in more detail. How many minutes after? So, you're saying that not much time elapsed between when the victim and Mr. Kudo arrived. We, oui, it's correct. But that still leaves the possibility that something happened in the gap of time. And by your recollection, how much time would you say elapsed? Let me see. Approximately two minutes, I would say. Two minutes? That's all? Hmm. Seems unlikely that anything untoward 
could have happened in such a short time? Rats. I knew I shouldn't have pursued this line of questioning. Well, let's pursue a, div for a different one. <laughs> we have unlimited, uh, unlimited pushes. Pushes, presses, you know what I mean. Alright. Don't ask anything. What was the time? I have curiosity about what time was it when Mr. Kudo arrived? Oh, uh, I cannot remember, monsieur. Hmm. I believe we were told by the witness yesterday. The crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. by the kind, scary old man, sir. Does that perhaps jog your memory, witness? The incident happened about 20 minutes after he arrived. So the victim must have arrived between 2 p.m. and 2.10. Hmm. Just after 2, huh? Thank you for your help in jogging my memory, monsieur. You're wonderful. I can't sit here all the time and do nothing. The time of day will be added to the witness's testimony. Great. I'll do everything I can do for you. <laughs> Merci bien. That's French, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad at least one person is in a good mood. He's even humming a song to himself. Alright, remember the old man arriving not long after 2 p.m. Victim Missouri came to the restaurant alone. Alright, not long after 2 p.m. No customers. So, your only customers were Mr. Kudo and the victim. How many times do you need to ask the same question, Trite? As many times as I need to, motherfucker! Damn! Let me breathe! <laughs> you never catch me drinking the same blend twice, but you did. Huh? You're trying to establish the presence of a phony victim in the f restaurant. But you're wasting your time. You can't grind bird seeds to make coffee if you catch my drift. But there's a hole in the testimony somewhere. I'm sure of it. Alright, when he got word of the lottery, he became excited. Did you see him? No, I was in the kitchen, but I heard him. I remember him shouting, yes, half a million bucks. Presumably, the defendant heard that too. Correct. Maggie? She looked like a poor little frightened dove. What about Mr. Kudo? The old man choked on some bird seed guts <laughs> that got stuck in his throat. It seems we all have yet another incident in our hands. It was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. And what were you doing at that point? Without any customers, you must have had time to kill. I'm at a multi- I'm a multi-talented woman, monsieur. Sorry, what do you mean? Here's a last renowned chef, Jean Armstrong, and the tragic poet, Clarice Armstrong. Cl Clarice? Oui, I was writing a poem. An angry tale of a chef and half a million dollars of debt, cooking for a man, who won half a million dollars lottery. It's called Pourquoi. <laughs> Pourquoi. <laughs> but Pourquoi. It means why. Perhaps I could recite it from, I could recite it from the for the court. Please don't. <laughs> Alright, there's no time for the phony to do any acting. You mean you you mean you contacted the police as soon as the incident occurred? I asked the old man to call from the payphone. By your own arguments, right? The purpose of this phony victim performance was so that the old man would see it. In other words, once the incident occurred, this opportunity would completely disappear. Indeed. Bien. It seems that the shadow of doubt has been lifted. I guess Mr. Armstrong is connected to the case, huh? Absolutely. Someone was impersonating Mr. Elk. And I refuse to believe he, he was obvious. Eh. I refuse to believe he was oblivious. He was there the whole time, after all. But if you're right, what did Maggie have noticed too? She fell unconscious when the incident occurred, remember? Huh. You mean that's when the phony staged his act? 
We know for sure once I found a hole in the testimony. Hmm. All right. Let's see what I can get. Just want to check. I will. I'm not going to get any more information if I press this, right? Are you absolutely sure about the time? When I think really hard, I'm sure it was just after two. Last time I stopped serving lunch menu. Quite right. I always break for lunch when the restaurants are serving their specials. I've been known to want. I've been known to wind up a case early just to make it on time. Hmm. Did I say wind up? Make wind up. I guess you should never get between a hungry judge and his lunch. Oh, would you look at that? It's almost lunchtime already. Witness, get on with your testimony. Get on with your bad self. All right. Old man arrived just after 2 p.m. Well, that's important because we unlocked it, so we gotta do something with that. See, so, yeah. taste bad. What about the uh, radio show? I'm afraid I finally got you, Mr. Armstrong. Qua? 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 What? <laughs> I'm not French. What do you mean? At the time in question, the victim was listening to the radio in his earpiece. The show he was listening to was Millionaire Radio. Each week, they announced the winning numbers of the half million dollar lottery ticket. That must be the show. This must be the show. What? That must be the show, Mon? What the fuck? Uh, okay. <laughs> Elk was listening to. Why is there a period there? Is that supposed to be abbreviation for something? I can't see any problems with the testimony, Mr. Wright. I wonder. Hmm? You say the victim arrived at your restaurant after 2 p.m., correct? It's short for Monsieur. Uh, for Monsieur, my bad. <laughs> Monsieur? Okay. You say the victim arrived at your restaurant after 2 p.m., correct? We, oui. I'm sure of it. I remember it perfectly now. I know is I know it was at that time because I just finished serving the lunch menu. Get to the point, right? If you have one. That show is broadcast live at 1:30 p.m. and it claims to be the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life. It's on the air at 1:30. Now supposedly the victim made some noise when it was announced that he had won. And yet I don't believe his cry of joy could have occurred at 2 p.m. Because the show had already finished more than 30 minutes earlier by the point in time. This victim would have been told about his... Would have been told... Wow, hold up. <laughs> Let me try that again. This victim would have been told about... Wow. Would, would have. Why am I saying that? Why am I saying that? My mind is autocorrected. This victim we've been told about... Has done nothing. Has done nothing but the impossible. Listen to the radio with the ruptured eardrum. Catch a show that was already over. There's only one conclusion you can draw from these facts. This victim was an imposter acting out the poisoning three, three, thirty minutes after the real murder. Yes, there were two Glenelds in Trespian that day. The real one, now dead, having been poisoned by the real killer, and the phony acting out the events for Mr. Kudo to witness. It certainly seems that way. I mean, if that wasn't the case, how could you explain the time discrepancy? Quite a performance, right? You were almost on a roll. Hmm? But sadly, you lack the rock hard foundation of rhythm to build your song. What is this? Music Theory 101? Let's recap. According to your imaginative theory, uh, it's now after 2 p.m. The phony is performing a play for the benefit of Mr. Kudo. How do you explain then where the real Glenel is? All right. I don't believe I have to spell this out for the courtroom, however. At the time, the real Glenel was already dead. That's certainly the obvious conclusion. Thank you, Trite. That's exactly what I was hoping you would say. What? Now, I presume you can prove this theory of yours. Can you explain where the missing corpse went to? 
the missing court so my theory was correct they killed him hit him and then did the thing and when he left out they pushed it all back in according to the old man's testimony there's only one other customer there i mean you got a whole ass kitchen in the back if the customer was the phone in glenelg then where did the killer hide the body for the real victim in the freezer the prosecution had a valid point mr wright if your theory is to stand up to examination by the court, you must provide us with proof by answering the prosecution's questions. Where did the killer hide the body? Yes, your honor. No conjecture, Trite. Well, let's hear some facts for once. But Armstrong was in the kitchen? Well, if they killed him 30 minutes before, you know, if they killed him 30 minutes before, um, uh, Victor showed up, they would have had enough time to kill him, take the body, clean up the scene, and then, you know, have the phony walk in, and then have him walk in, and then, you know, once they do all that, fucking, you know, you know, they got five minutes, push it all back, assuming that maybe Tiger was hiding in the back room as well. Show the, uh, show the court a piece of evidence that provides where the body was hidden. Evidence. What's with the intense pressure in here all of a sudden? I thought I had him with the contradiction. I thought I had him with a contradiction too. Now they want me to prove shit. What do they think I am, a lawyer? <laughs> but he's turned it all around and backed me into a corner instead. Well, Mr. Wright, the court will now hear the defense theory and evidence. First, where's the body of the real one? Outside. Inside. I'll stick to my guns. I'll stick to my guns. It might be outside, but I'll stick to my guns. It would have been too dangerous to take the body outside, obviously. The body must have been hidden somewhere inside. Hmm, interesting. But where could a body have been hidden inside the restaurant? Perhaps you can... Perhaps you would care to show the court on these plans where? Yes, Your Honor. Huh. Could be in the kitchen, right? Could be behind the counter. I'm gonna go with kitchen. I'm gonna stick to my guns. The body was hidden here. Hmm, I see. Nice, nice, uh, nice position. Uh, supposition, fuck. But the real question is, can you back it up? Where's the evidence that proves the body was hidden in that location? Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this bottle? No. I've never seen an ugly bottle before in my life. I only use the very best bottles, monsieur. Highest quality only from me. Where was that bottle found, Mr. Wright? Interesting, uh, interestingly, that is a hard word for me to say for some reason. Interesting, interestingly enough, your honor, it was found in the kitchen of Trespien. Eh? Quoi? But I only ever use the bottles for my aromatherapy oils. But this bottle doesn't contain aromatherapy oil, Mr. Armstrong. Nope, it contains a medication. What kind of medication? I'm sure everyone remembers, don't they? That Mr. L... L... Uh, I keep blanking on the name. Mr. Elge visited an auto... 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 fuck! Visit an ear doctor. And was given medication that day. That's a big word. Words are big. Words are big. They hurt. You can't be serious. The defense had the the defense had the contents of the bottle analyzed, and I have the lab results here. The contents of the bottle matched the prescription that was given to Mr. Elge. Glenn murderer hid the body in the restaurant's kitchen. In the oven? Oh God! In the oven? At which time, the bottle fell out of the victim's pocket. Mr. Armstrong? When the... When the... Fuck. When the incident occurred, did you say you were in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. Yes, 
You know what I'm about to say. It was you who hit the victim's body. You did a fine job pretending to defend my client, Maggie Bird, however. You were sitting... Sitting? You were setting her up to take the fall behind the poor girl's back. No. Order. This is extraordinary. This is extraordinary development. Witness. Did you... Did you murder Mr. Glen Elge? Never. I cannot do such a horrible thing. Good, good dot. Oh, look at that Adam's apple go! <laughs> the bitterness. Every time I get lied to, I was down a mug of coffee. This one, that's one of my rules. Do you have the slightest idea how many cubs you had by now? Then I like to do the same to the person who lied to me. I like to take them down with my empty cup. What? Listen up, chief. Chief? Chef? Whatever. How about a brand new flavor in your ear? Wait, I'm gonna... Wait, what? My H defected friend. Huh? I'm, I'm not even... I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> it's a trap! Listen to me! It's a trap! Yo hablo espanol, Mr. Armstrong, and por favor is Spanish. I'm only gonna ask you once. Did you do it? No. Absolutely not. I simply... I... Let's hear it. You got one shot. <laughs> Firestorm.exe has stopped working. Yeah, pretty much. Witness, the court will permit you the chance to make one final statement. If you lie under oath, 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 why'd I say it like that? If you lie under oath again, Mr. Gadot's coffee mug awaits you. You hear that? He will swallow you whole. <laughs> As does my gravel. We, oui, it is clear. What do they always say in the movies? I got a bad feeling about this. I'm getting too old for this shit. Very well. Begin your final testimony, Mr. Armstrong. All right. It is true. I had the body in the kitchen. A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. I had to go along with it because there's a reason I would uh, I could not refuse. But I did not kill. Him. I swear. You must believe me. Already forgot what I said. <laughs> Good thing I didn't even read it. Oh no, that one, that one I know I didn't read. <laughs> I saw like one line of nothing but French and I went like, yup, not happening. <laughs> you were forced by who? I cannot say, or I will be erased. Let's try a different question then. When Mr. Ellis died, has he, uh, was he really the only person at his table? There was... There was another man. <gasps> you slut. I knew it. Maggie was telling the truth. You may cross-examine the witness now, Mr. Wright. There's just one more thing I need to do. I gotta break this guy and get him to tell us the name of the real killer. The real killer who has the real skiller. All right, we are getting somewhere. It is true, I had the body in the kitchen. Man forced me to do it, had no choice. I had to go along with him because there was a reason I could not refuse. And what reason would that be, Mr. Armstrong? You know, Monsieur. Yes. Surely you cannot accept the young, expect the young maiden to talk about such an embarrassment. A maiden? You're a bit old to get away with that. And a bit too male. I can't finish the cross-examination without establishing his reason. So, I'll just have to prove it with evidence. But I did not kill him, I swear it. Believe me. I believe you. 
A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. What man? Who was he? I cannot say. I fear for my life. He's really scared. He'll just have to put his put the words in his mouth, Nick. Yeah, you're right. If he won't tell me, I'll tell him. But <laughs> but why would you go along with this man? Now, I can I can present you know this evidence, right? But it's not really a contradiction. It's true, I had the body in the kitchen. Did you carry the body by yourself? We. Oui. I carried him. And I carried Maggie too. Maggie too. When she saw the victim collapse, she fainted. I could not leave I could not leave her there. But why did you hide the bodies? Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. Did not kill him, I swear. So, you're claiming that all you did was hide the bodies, is that correct? We, oui, that is right. If you were to, if we are to believe you, Mr. Armstrong, you must tell the court everything. You must make clear the identity of the man who ordered you to do this. He's already confessed this much. You might as well stop dancing around the real issue. Yeah, but he really doesn't want to tell us who the killer is. Then sock it to him, Nick! Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Alright. Just depends on what I'm using. Man forced me to do it. I'm gonna use this. I'm not sure if I can just straight up just say the name. Alright, if I can just straight up go like, You mean this guy? I feel like I need to throw some like proof in there. Alright, so I'm gonna do this. Alright, there we go. You have half a million dollars debt, don't you? Half a million dollars? Is this true, Mr. Armstrong? We... J what? Just this, this uh, I can't even... Whatever. <laughs> I was weak, and I borrowed the money. This is Mr. Armstrong's Achilles heel. And that's why you can refuse anything asked you by this man. This guy right here. This guy. This guy right here. This one. A half a million dollars loan from a black market loan shark. And you had no way of paying him back, did you? My dog is crying behind me right now for absolutely no reason. I swear, every time, every time I throw headphones on my head, she does this. Are you okay? No. No. Get away from the remote. Don't you dare. I'll be with you in like, give me like 30 minutes, I'll be with you. That's why you were forced to do anything this man told you. We, oui, it's as you say. Mr. Armstrong. The tiger. He told me he was going to use my restaurant for a business rendezvous. On the day in question, he was meeting the victim to demand his, uh, demand, demand that he repay his loan. I don't know why it happened like that. I just did what he told me to do. I had no choice. I carried the body and and the and cons and consent and consent and consigned and consent and consent <laughs> words big they hurt. <laughs> I carried the body and the unconscious Maggie out of the dining area. And into the kitchen after that, I try to forget what I've seen. I think we can, I think we can now safely say that the man who forced you, who forced your hand was Mr. Furo Tiger. Hmm. I do not have one, I do have one further question for you, Mr. Armstrong. The poison in the lottery ticket that were found in the defendant's apron pocket. Was that your doing as well? No, I knew nothing about that. Making it look like it was Maggie who'd done it. I was, I was not. It was despicable. Despicable, Mr. Godot. 
You will summon this Furo Tigera as a witness. I doubt that that can be arranged today, so we will adjourn for now. Proceedings will continue tomorrow. Or more likely, next week, because we're not going to be streaming for the weekend. 30 minutes. What? Oh, fuck. <laughs> the trial will go on. I'll see to it myself. I need half an hour to get this guy on the stand. Not a minute more. How the... Don't sit back and relax yet, Trite. No one knows if the chef is really telling the truth or not. This trial could still go either way. Very well. Your request is granted, Mr. Godot. We will resume once Mr. Mr. Tiger, Mr. Tiger is ready to take the stand. Until then, court is adjourned for a 30 minute recess. To be continued. It's like the Smash Brother announcer. He's like, continue? All right, oh, we're, we land right on 10. Okay, who's the guy that he can just get a mafioso on the stand? He has ties. He has ties to the mafia. He's like, remember that time I defended you? Good. All right. <clears throat> so, looking at the time, this is a perfect place to stop. We made a lot of progress. I'm happy about it. And so we're going to stop right here, all right? The next stream won't be, well, it'll be in the schedule, but it won't be until uh, Sunday night. Well, for me, East Coast. Sunday night, uh, Monday morning, depending where you're at in the world, you know, that stuff. Maybe it's the afternoon for you. So that's what's going to happen next time. We're going to continue with more Phoenix Wright. And just as another reminder, we have some emotes. Hey, look at that, those beautiful emotes. Look at that, I'm throwing them in the chat right now. Because, you know, we have Fireflow. Everybody needs an orgasm emote, of course. We have Pearl Patine, the true conqueror of darkness. And if you guys are inclined to go and get BTTV, again, it's a free extension for your browser. It's very safe. I, I promise you nothing will happen. You don't have to download anything. It's not like a real download. It's just an extension. You know what I mean? But if you do that, you get access to, you don't have to be subbed. For that, you just get free access to search head. I, I think you don't have to be sub for that. I'll check that. You know what? I'll check that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you don't have to be, though. But you get access to search head, Wellington. And his fineness and wonderfulness and beautifulness. Look at him. He's beautiful. You do it for Chad. That's what you do. You wake up every morning, you say for Chad or for not Chad. Who knows? But that's going to be it for tonight. My dog is crying next to me. I'm assuming she wants to go outside. And, uh, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I need to say? I'm going to try and upload the playthroughs that we've done on the stream. That's, what is that? That's Uncharted, which is like one stream that we did that we managed to beat the game in. The whole entire game in like a five-hour stream. Um, what was it, like five hours, ten minutes or something like that? I don't remember. Uncharted, Sonic 06, fucking, uh... What's it to? Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 7. So I'm going to try and edit and upload those. It shouldn't... I should be able to get them by the end of next week, I think. I don't think it would be that much of a problem. But those will be on the YouTube. For those who want to know what the YouTube is, right there on the screen. Um, and then, yeah, go also check out Volta Base. He did the, you know, he did the artwork for the thumbnails and stuff like that. He is very talented. I give him all my support. And I think that is it. I'm pretty sure I don't have nothing else to say. But, yeah. So, I want to say thank you to everyone who came out live tonight, this morning, this afternoon, wherever you are in the world. It means a lot to me. And I want to say thank you to those who watch the VODs. I know there's people who cannot catch this live, but they still watch the VODs. That's amazing. And for those on YouTube, whether you're new or old, if you do want to catch it live or just watch it early before it comes out on YouTube, head over to the Twitch, right? And other than that, I think that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much everything. So, 
Thank you guys very much. As always, I will see you guys in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care. I'm a chef, chef too.